May 19th, 2015. Please note that all commissioners are present. First item on the agenda is approval of the minutes for April 21st. Any corrections or comments to those minutes? Mm -hmm. There's no changes. Can I have a motion to approve the minutes? So nice. moved. Second? Second. Second. Take it as all those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed or abstentions? <coughs> nope. All right. We have uh, four building permit reviews today. The first one is 28 North 1st Street, TV Enterprises, window modifications. The uh, first case before you tonight is a uh, came to us last month as a concept review. So they're here tonight as a permit review. If you recall, um, this is at the uh, former rate house that has been expanded and has been used as commercial for commercial purposes. The request is to uh, replace where there is a single window on the second floor uh, in the uh, addition with two windows uh, at the second floor. Um, at this point, I have nothing to add to this, so I will turn it over to Steve Vassilian from Vassilian Architects, and he can answer any additional questions or provide more information. Good evening. Uh, Hello. I think we all remember that we went through this presentation a few weeks ago, and uh, just to recap, uh, we're, the two new windows are going to be symmetrical over the one below. The details of the stonework are going to be identical to what is existing. In fact, we have a, an existing window inside the building that was covered up after one of the additions. We're going to be taking that header, that head stone piece and the sill piece, reusing them in this location. The window openings are going to be exactly the same as what, what the, the existing ones are. We are not going to be uh, putting in a window with any fillers or anything like that around the perimeter. There'll be full-size openings. There are going to be Pella windows, just like the ones that are existing, except now these are going to be uh, new windows rather than window single-pane windows that were done in the 70s. All right. Any questions? All right. Can we have a motion? Move, Move we to approve, accept. Uh, go ahead. Please, you do. Move to accept the application for 20 North 1st Street as presented. There's a second. second. Okay. Applano? Aye. Uh, Anderson? Aye. Hiller? Aye. Hellman? Aye. Zelmer? Aye. Zinke? Aye. Chairman Roy? Aye. Motion carries. Thank you very Thank much. You. Thank Before you. Before I step away, I just wanted to add one more thing. Uh, I know some of the issues that are facing you as a commission, uh, and I want you to know that I'm going to be writing a letter to the city council expressing my support of the work that you do. Uh, historic preservation is a valuable uh, addition to our community, and it's very easy for people to lose sight over time over all the work that's been done in decades that's made Geneva the great community that, that it is, and in many ways the model for what other preservation organizations do. I know we in Batavia have, have, have long admired the work that you've done and the results of that work. So you have my support and uh, anything I can do to help. So thank I you. I appreciate that. Thank you. Thank You're you. welcome. Have a nice evening. Thank you. you too. Uh, next item is 401 Franklin Street. Todd Kendall. Next project before you is uh, a proposal for a new two-story two garage, uh, which is a detached garage. This is a permit review at 401 Franklin Street. Um, the uh, residents, um, uh, this is what it looked like in the 1999 architectural survey. Um, it has been remodeled extensively from its original roots as a mid-19th century Greek revival. It's been added on to numerous times and uh, remodeled and altered numerous times. So the request is to provide a new uh, two-story garage at the rear of the property um, that would be sympathetic to the architecture of the present house. Um, there is no one prevalent style remaining in the um, existing um, house. It's a very eclectic house at this point. The um, pro project would be, a, like I said, in the uh, north yard or the rear yard of the property, so it would be entered off of 4th Street. And this has been reviewed for uh, zoning compatibility and lot coverage, and the existing property is um, uh, well over allowable lot coverage. And the proposal um, with the removal of the driveway to a ribbon driveway and the removal of a shed and some other um, areas 
uh, reduces the, or not reduces, but uh, keeps the property, the, the uh, uh, equivalent a lot coverage as is there today. So it has not made the condition any worse. Um, Ma Michael, yes. could you repeat that? The, the lot existing, the existing building coverage, a lot coverage is the exceeds the existing building and develop and site improvements, which mm -hmm. includes sidewalks, driveways, etc. Um, exceeds the cur current allowable lot coverage okay. um, with the the uh, attached or detached garage and the removal and alteration of some of the uh, site improvements it does not make the um, condition any worse than, than the present condition okay is the current building then not the code is grandfathered in is that what you're saying correct on, on, on several fronts not only is it a lot coverage issue but it's also has a re, uh, side yard that does not conform to current side yard requirements mm -hmm. which is very common in this particular block in particular wouldn't that require a, a, a zoning a, a no the, the the garage is is located within all of the permissible um, zoning setbacks the proposed garage if I'm, that is correct, the, correct. The, ho the house is non-conforming now correct. you're removing the driveway and the shed and that that would make it conform currently then it'll not get any worse than it was right. yeah. so I mean worse. if it's not conforming then zoning says you have to when you put an addition in it has to be conforming right it's not the way the the garage the new garage is conforming to setbacks um, when when oh, a property okay. I see what you're saying yeah. but not coverage okay and when a property is non-conforming in regards to lot coverage, we don't allow that condition to get any worse. So if they're at 47%, and then and in this case they're removing coverage in one portion of the property but replacing it elsewhere, as long as they don't go over that 47%, we allow that to continue. Okay. okay. So, let me Sorry. say there's a large stone patio that's being removed. That's part of it. I've also got here for the applicant is... Um, is, are, the, are the plans for the building and um, again I will turn it over to um, Mr. Teipel to uh, explain any of the details and nuances of the project and answer any questions the Commission may have. Uh, I think it's been fairly well stated what we're doing. Um, I did point out that we're taking out a large stone patio um, we're reducing the garage the driveway to just two strips they probably won't really use that drive <coughs> that gar the existing garage the Kendall's moved they they like Geneva they want to stay here uh, the existing garage is almost unusable it's so small you can open your door and you can hardly get out of the car that's why they're trying to get a new garage freestanding garage in there um, and uh, after going back and forth with the city quite a bit, we figured out that we can do this uh, and meet the zoning ordinances. And so we propose to do the addition basically to uh, reflect the existing details on the house, the existing gable. It's a pretty simple house. The exist siding would match. The windows basically would match. Uh, and as a matter of fact, I had a conversation with the contractor bidding on it today as to you know how we wanted that done and we said yeah basically we want to match what's on the house with the new with the new garage what is the material of the siding I'm sorry what's the material of the siding it's just cedar siding okay we, we haven't have seen these hardboard I don't yeah we, we haven't seen these so we need to we're just uh, basically we just call out on the drawings to match existing do you know what be cedar siding stain to match okay um, are you changing the um, the reveal on the siding halfway up is that why there's a difference in no uh, someone else started the drawings and uh, when I took them over I didn't make that change okay so it, it's the same it's all, all the same it's just uh, a drafting error what was your thought about the placement of the garage it's in pretty much in the middle of the usable backyard uh, 
Is it needed it to be there for been, a setback? Well, or? you can't. We could have moved it forward a little bit. Do you see the dotted line running yeah. parallel to 4th Street? Mm -hmm. Yes. That's the setback <clears throat> line. So we could have moved it forward at one point. But part of, part of the discussion had been at uh, earlier in the design was the matter of backing out onto 4th Street and giving them enough room to maneuver a car and be able to pull out, if I, if I recall, that is part of the reason where the garage, why the garage ended up where it ended up. There's a, there's a current wall around the, uh, right. the, the rear yard there, and, the and, and the majority of that's going to re still re be retained, correct? The wall? Uh, that's right. There has to be an opening there, but we want to keep as much of it as possible. So the idea was to give enough room to maneuver in a, in a mortar court, essentially, to be able to pull out onto 4th Street exactly. and, and have, have a good view coming and down the street instead of backing out onto it. The driveway itself is narrowed. It doesn't really affect our lot coverage, but it's narrowed because of the, there's a nice sycamore tree and another tree there on the corner. Are, are you planning on keeping the sycamore? Are you planning yes. on keeping the sycamore? Yes. Okay, thank you. So you're, you're expecting to remove the, I, I just brought up a picture uh, of your house. So you're expecting to remove the existing driveway going to the existing garage. Is that correct? There will still be two 18-inch uh, wide strips so that you could drive a car in. I see. But basically, they'll probably use it for bike storage and things like that. I see. Okay. This is Todd Kendall here also, the owner. Okay. I've been in that house. You're right, the garage is unus unus unusable. Um, I am a little concerned, and I understand the, the you know, backing out onto Fourth Street, but, um, and I appreciate that the that it's new construction and it's detached. I just think that it seems you have almost no usable backyard then. I could make a flippant remark, but that's why we have parks. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I will say this has, has been about nine months, I believe, in looking at options. I think it's, yeah. it was about nine months ago we started looking at this. Yeah. And, and they, ha they have looked at a lot of different options to get a two-car garage on this. Their, their original preference was to have the two-car garage off of Franklin Street, but um, we couldn't accommodate that with zoning. Um, and so it, I think the Kennels would admit this is not their number one choice for the garage, but in looking at probably, I think I've looked at at least five site plans with you, and I know David has looked at a few more. Um, this is the one that most closely preserved that uh, northwest corner of the yard, which is important to the family, and met all the other criteria for getting a car maneuvered and what have you. Um, but like I said, we've looked probably at just about every place you could put a garage on this property, and this is kind of the one that meets the majority of the criteria for the family. I think I, if I sum, summarize that correctly. Yeah, um, he's doing a good job. Uh, the other thing I would note uh, relative to uh, housing in general, we do you know a lot of housing for builders and so on, and a lot of people don't even want yards. I mean, if you look at the way they build, you know, five yards on each side and 30 feet in the back and whatever in the front, you know. Personally, I like working in my yard and, and do all the time, but. Right. Any other comments? Um, what, what is the garage door made out of? Um, that's a good question that the uh, uh, contractor asked of me today. You know, it, it could be fiberglass, it can be wood, whatever you suggest. Um, and then the, uh, it looks like it's got a, a usable second story. Yes, it does. Is that going to be for storage, or is it going to actually be used? It's primarily storage. Yeah, storage. Okay. What are the windows? The wood wood windows. Okay. Similar to what's there now. Same. Uh, <coughs> it was my understanding that the other people working on this project had reviewed it with historic somehow. I don't know whether they did or not. I haven't heard anybody here say that they knew anything about it. So. It has never come before the commission as a concept. It, like I said, this is probably, we've seen several different versions of this over time as it's moved around, but um, I think it's only been staff that has seen the changes over, over yeah. the last nine months or so. Right. 
I, I would like to note also, since the question was raised about the windows, and I forgot to mention this, if you look at the house today, the window and the fenestration pattern is, again, very eclectic, and it does not represent anything of a historic window pattern or window proportions. And so um, when this first came in and the original window, or I looked at the original windows, I had some concern that they didn't really look like a historic proportion. But comparing it to the existing house, if you made this with historic proportion, I think it's going to make the house look out of place and I don't think that's the intent I think the intent of them of the owners and and Mr. Teibel is to blend the two together and work with what's what's there on the existing house so there's about I think six I think I think kind of six different window types just on the front facade Probably of the original of the existing house could you could what's we go the height back to the elevation of the house the front uh, elevation I don't have that but you have a picture don't you yes you can go back from here yeah. you don't want me to touch this <laughs> What's the, just arrows. what's the height of the garage compared to the height of the house? Uh, it would be lower. Not a lot, but it is lower. Um, again, originally it was taller, but uh, I lowered it so that you've got essentially uh, eight foot high ceiling area in there and eight foot high in the, in the garage. Mm -hmm. um, I could probably look through my field notes and if any of yours, I have the full size plans if, if any of you would like to look at those. Does the, the slope of the roof match the slope on the house? Yes. It's just difficult to see from here. I'm good. And you're planning on matching as much detail as you can with what eaves and corner boards and Exactly. Okay, and water tables or whatever. To answer your question, Commissioner uh, Zellmer, is the uh, height to the eave is 17 and a half feet. Okay. What was it? Seven? 17 and a half. Right. I'm, I'm more concerned about what the height of the existing eave, whether it's the same or whether it's slightly different or higher or lower. As long as, I guess, the... It's going to be pretty similar. I'm not guaranteeing it's exactly yeah. the same, yeah. but it's not. All right. Any other questions or comments? I I don't think we really have a we've given some leeway on what the materials of the door uh, yeah. is, right? I mean, it doesn't have to be wood. They're doing a lot. Haven't we allowed fiberglass and metal doors and? In the garage. What, what, what you have done in the past on some of these cases where it's not real clear what the materials are, you have uh, made a, a uh, motion to appro approve it, but, but have made recommendations and have that worked out with staff if you're comfortable with that, or if you want it to come back with additional materials and details, well, it's, it's your pleasure. In my opinion, it's new construction, so the materials are almost, you know, not yeah, as I, relevant. And I think, I think a metal garage door is going to last a lot it's going to weather yeah, a lot better. Yeah, fiberglass is going to go better than Yeah, and wood. it's behind a wall. Most of it's behind a wall, actually. So, mm -hmm. or some of it, I should say. And you'll still have that style. I mean, it'll yeah, it's still look. You're, and you're a ways away from the face of the, you're not right up on top of it, so. The, uh, the, concrete, the concrete wall that goes around, well, it, it goes down um, fourth, and then it is I believe goes on the property line between back. the neighbor. Yes. Um, are you expecting to take out just enough of that concrete wall just to slide in a car, or are you planning on taking all of it uh, up to the property line? Just enough to just enough to get a car and ba you know basically 12 feet. I see. So we we won't even see this garage. Probably not. That's right. Probably not. There's mm -hmm. a tree right there too. All right. Can I have a motion? I move to approve the drawings as the, as presented, the project as presented. Can I have a second? A second. For clarification, do you want to tie that to uh, SOI standards 9 and 10? You made the motion. Yes, that's I know. That's why we're all looking at you. I know. <laughs> and that's why I'm trying to. I'm trying to. How I can state it. Um, in, uh, in in compliance with, in compliance with uh, SIO standards uh, nine and ten. Should be. She's okay. Yeah. Okay. All right. Yep. 
Linnell. Aye. Uh, Anderson? Aye. Hiller? Aye. Solomon? Aye. Zelmer? Aye. Zinke? Aye. Roy? Aye. Motion carries. All right. Thank you. We thank you. Next item is 127 North 1st Street. Joe Stanton, new attached garage and roof deck. It, it seems like there have been themes for many of the meetings, and so I think tonight's meeting is brought to you by garages. <laughs> <laughs> Bakery company. Um, 127 North 1st Street is uh, the location of the next project. This is a proposed new one-story attached garage with a roof deck. Um, this is actually um, proposed for a very historic house, one of the uh, uh, what is um, identified in some of the histories as one of the first five brick houses in Geneva. The Spalding House was originally built in 1843, according to some records. It may be a little bit earlier or slightly later. Um, I believe from looking at the house that that 1843 portion is most likely the north wing, the one-story wing, and the second-story wing was added probably within, uh, the, with ten, within 10 to 12 years afterwards. This is the, um, the survey sheet for the, uh, from the 1999 survey as a comparison if you've been out there and, and, and looked at the, the site. Um, it has, the front porch has been enclosed and the proposed garage would be um, on the left of the second page of the survey sheet. Um, this is identified as a potentially significant uh, uh, property within the uh, historic district um, and is associated with early, uh, an early builder in Geneva. The proposed garage would be um, at the uh, low side of the property on the, on the east side uh, faced with the garage was facing Peyton Street. Originally, the proposal came in to be a two-car garage mm -hmm. and, um, um, and forward of the, of the house. And after the applicants looked at that, they decided to sit on a one-and-a-half-car garage and um, just provide some parking for an additional car outside. Um, these are the proposed uh, elevations. And um, I apologize that, again, you didn't have a complete package for this meeting. Um, but I did speak with the, uh, um, the applicant, and they can talk to this, and I apologize for some of these images aren't as clear as I would like, but they only scan so well. I talked uh, with the, um, uh, the applicants about some of the details may need to be refined um, because of one, the building is so significant, and secondly, to really match the Greek Revival details of the original building. Um, I provided some examples in the center at the top there to the applicant of uh, how parapets and, uh, and roofs were handled in the Greek Revival style, including a small uh, sketch from the McAllister book of the typical cornice proportions uh, for Greek Revival. Um, the, um, those are very similar not only to the elements on the street-facing gable of the existing house, but also, if you look across the street at 128 North 1st Street, uh, there's an existing portico that's, uh, um, uh, if not original, is very early to the house, which is also amongst the early brick homes, and that has se several of the same details um, on, on that. So what I have done, and, and I apologize to not only the commission, but to the applicant, because I did not have time to uh, get this done, but I did tell them I would have some sketches for them at some point. Um, I took their drawing and just threw, uh, not threw, but put some of the uh, same Greek Revival details, which are typically very broad and very um, um, bulky and, and simple in form, and shown how their proposed uh, porch could be uh, modified with some very simple uh, details to um, uh, reflect the Greek Revival architecture, again, copying the proportions from the 128 uh, por North First Portico. And then some discussions about whether or not uh, a heavy cornice could create a knee wall or a small cant or something with a, with a smaller uh, railing uh, or the same height but a, a smaller proportioned railing um, over the existing um, porch or over the existing or over the proposed garage rather. Um, the questions that remain um, that aren't really um, totally flushed out in the, in, the, in the architectural documents that were submitted um, are the materials of the garage door. Um, the details of the garage door and, and some of the architectural details. Um, I, I, I won't put words in the applicant's mouth, but in our conversations, he uh, expressed that they were very willing to uh, consider um, modifications to the drawings that were submitted that would be more in keeping with the architecture of the Greek Revival. So um, uh, at this point, I will let the applicant come forward. Uh, 
uh, Joe Stanton and um, Mr. Teipel again, and they can talk through their ideas and can react to what they're seeing here with you at, uh, this evening as well. Excuse me, did we review something on this yeah. before? We did review a garage, uh, a one-car garage with a gable roof um, several months ago. Mm -hmm. Also, Mr. Teipel was the architect on that. Um, this is a new owner and a, a new concept. Very similar, but a new, uh, uh, some Is the roof flat or is it? Yeah, this would be a flat deck. roof, it would be a roof deck. Okay, thank you. Um, and, and it would actually be accessible from the first floor of the house because it's set down, um, um, down into the grade at the lower side of the, of the okay. lot. Okay. So with that, forward, backward. Uh, I'm Joe Stanton, uh, uh, 717 North 1st Street. Uh, we, we bought this recently. Uh, the previous owner had brought in plans to uh, I'll put a garage in there. Uh, the, uh, we, had, we had looked at those plans and the, the, the peak on that garage didn't seem to match the rest of the house. We went and we, uh, we pulled out some records from uh, uh, at the History Center. Uh, also, the McConaughey family was the owners previous to uh, uh, the Shodines, and I checked with some family members and that flat roof with the railing around is what was there uh, you know, originally. Uh, we looked at some uh, sandboard maps and uh, some of them referred to it as two stories, some as one story, and we, we found out that meant that it really wasn't truly, you know, two stories, but, uh, you know, probably some sort of, uh, you know, piece on top of it. Uh, we looked at putting a two-car garage there. The original property went farther to the east, uh, so the original structure was probably the equivalent of about a three-car garage, pretty similar to what we're doing, but the property went that far. It was subdivided for the River North uh, uh, condominiums. Uh, so as it is right now, the driveway on this property actually sits right on the property line uh, because it, that, that's where it was uh, divided at. So there's, there's no room to put any more than uh, you know, a, an oversized one-car garage as far as width. We looked at putting a, a two-car garage there, and we were able to get it, uh, you know, we were able to fit it in there and uh, uh, comply with everything we had to. But when we actually saw the drawings, it seemed to overpower uh, you know, the, the house. There was so much wood on the two-car garage, you know, it was overpowering the brick, which was the attractiveness of it. Uh, so we went down to, uh, we, we looked at maybe a stackable garage going, going back, and that didn't throw us too much. So we, we felt that as, as long as we put a, a parking pad, made the driveway a little bit wider so we could uh, put a second car there, it would work. Well, we're calling it a, a one-and-a-half car garage. This way, you know, part of the car can you know be right in front of the garage and then just offset a little bit. This way, it, it uh, the property goes almost straight uphill. You know, if you fall, you roll down uh, the property. <laughs> uh, we didn't want to have to be digging into the yard. So what this does is we're only going about six feet up the the hill. So we're taking very little dirt out uh, to accommodate this uh, uh, th this little uh, parking spot next to the garage. Uh, we're also looking to the original plans that the so Dean said presented was just for the one car garage. About it. I'm not sure when it was put in, but it's uh, you know vinyl aluminum and uh, there's nothing special there. Uh, we'll, we'll pull it off and then see if we can tell what was there. Uh, the architecture of it. makes them happy. We're, we're not married to anything in particular. Uh, we, we want whatever is on the porch, though, uh, you know, has to match the garage, so everything uh, goes together. Uh, the garage door was going to be a uh, fiberglass door. Uh, it's cherry in color uh, on it, and the, uh, the fiberglass hooks. color uh, it'll you know accent the brick wall uh, the rest of the garage would probably be uh, white Joe the, um, the I mean I'm looking at the west elevation um, are you uncovering the porch then is yes that... we're uncovering the porch okay so you're bringing that back to what the way it would have been yes I applaud that definitely um, 
as I recall, when the last iteration of this came around, um, I suggested that they do a flat roof. I think that that's a much better use of space. Um, I have to admit, I'm not crazy about the, the banister simply because it seems to be really heavy in comparison <coughs> to the detailing on the rest of the house. The, the reason we, we drew it that way is uh, uh, anecdotally to two people that remember it, that independently each remembered it that way. It, it could have been changed in uh, the 30s or 40s and it might have been different uh, you know, in the uh, 1800s, you know, we don't know. Uh, I don't know anybody old enough to take me back far enough, but uh, it seems like in you know the 20s to the 40s we know that this is the way uh, you know that it looked. We're we're not married to it, you know, being that way. Be, you know, since it's being built new, it's it's not that it's not like we're throwing something out. We're starting new no matter what. So we're we're no very images. open as far as Michael's suggestions on uh, the accent on it. There are code issues that you have to meet, such as it has to be 42 inches high which is what the top railing shows, and then usually I put down a lower one. And then the spindles have to be small, close enough so that you can't pass a four-inch ball through. So you're, you're kind of stuck with what you Well. There are other things we can do, obviously. We can look there are other things that could be done. Those are, um, and, and those do you are, have an, uh, uh, a section of the, the spindle that you're planning on using? Uh, they actually are drawn as a turned spindle, not a two by two. Right. So that was that was the intent was that we would put a, a lighter weight spindle in there. It's just as I'm looking at the front of the building, all of the symbols are yes, it's Greek revival revival, but they're very simple. It's like yeah. the simplest form of Greek revival. And then on the back you have all this detail in the in the, the, the banister code issues notwithstanding. Um, it, I'm just wondering if it couldn't be simplified a little bit? We, we, we certainly could. And, you know, we talked about that. We can, you know, go uh, to simple squared spindles all the way around there. We can, you know, figure yeah. Again, in my conversation with Joe, and, and I apologize, my schedule just got backed up this week. Um, but um, when, when we initially discussed it, Joe was very open to discussing how that might uh, turn out. What I could suggest is that if the form and the concept is acceptable to the commission, um, we could certainly uh, move forward with that and then uh, bring back several railing details, maybe even next month or something for some approval because that's going to be a, I don't want to say a cosmetic, but it's not going to be a major uh, sure, we, we architectural change if that would make everybody more comfortable. And again, that's more of an uh, uh, issue of my timing this past week, which I apologize for. And, and and I, that's I think the difference is it's not like we have something, we're being asked to rip it down, we're building new, so right, making exactly. changes is no problem at all. What, what I would like to see would be keep the cornice at the top of the garage. I think that that is appropriate for the rest of the building. And then don't do a heavy corner um, at the edges of the, of the banister. And even maybe consider stepping back the banister and painting it a dark color. So you almost, you know, it kind of visually goes away a little bit. Or maybe you, or maybe you go with a, a metal banister. Um, you know, a, a, a wrought iron for the back, lack of a better word. I don't, I don't know if I like the idea of a metal banister because it doesn't seem to, you know, go with uh, the history. I can't imagine that it was, uh, you know, you know, metal back then. It was probably, you know, wood, and I'm afraid that it didn't. Uh, well, I'm just thinking of making it go away, something simple and dark, so that when you're looking at it from the street, you see the heavy white cornice where it is, but the banister itself is not so visually prominent. What do you... Um, if, you look, I, if you look to on the east elevation, see it's really not that prominent. You do have the, the vertical balusters, but the rest of it, it's fairly light. Yeah, from it's, from it's the front light. of the house, you'll see very... Because the, the, uh, the amount that this property slopes down, you know, the, uh, you, you wouldn't even... You'd barely see the, the roof would be sidewalk level if we didn't have those, uh, you know, banisters on there. Uh, the reason we were, we were, you know, going with white is, is not to hide it because yeah. it, has, it was, uh, you know, focal right, points so before. And uh, we house. drove around uh, the city and there were more examples of this than I uh, thought existed. Mm -hmm. I, I snapped quite a few pictures and uh, 
you know, most of them are all white. And, uh, Southern building. Uh, so it's not that they, we wouldn't change them if that was a requirement. I think we would prefer leaving it white, having that contrast off the, uh, off the rest of it. So what you see, you know, basically is the brick first, the brick of the house first. And I think making that dark would probably make them pop out more than leaving them white. I think I think there's probably several solutions to it, and again, um, the, the applicant submitted everything on time, and it was just a matter of time on my part to really sit down and review with them. Um, if you're uncomfortable with the whole concept, you could table it, um, or like I said, if you're comfortable with the the general shape and location, and it's a matter of the details. Because one thing that Joe and I have talked about is that um, when they open up the porch, we're pretty confident some historic details are going to show up. Um, of what that porch looked like, um, either just in paint ghosts or actually some actual structure remaining. Um, but you can't see it now. I walked into it with Joe and walked around the house, um, and it's all finished on the inside right now. So, um, again, I think what, and I'm not trying to put words in your mouth, but I think what Joe's looking for is, is an approval. They can go ahead and get a permit uh, so they can get, get the work started on the framing and come back to uh, work with the staff to... Uh, you know, to uh, nail, to down, nail the down the details, especially as they do some of the demolition work and see what especially, details are especially exposed. Especially with the porch, we, we did talk about, uh, you know, having Michael there when we, when we demoed uh, the top and then make a final decision once we're looking at what used to be there. Okay. Instead of drawing on a guess, you know, rip everything apart, you know, he'll come there. And again, we're, we're building it from, from scratch, so we're, we're not, yeah, we're, we're willing to do anything. Same thing on that porch, you know, the roof is stained, but nothing else. Yeah. So if we can pick up what was there before, we're happy to put that back. We have no reason to fight for something else because, like I said, we're, mm -hmm. it's, we're, we're doing it new no matter what. So. So, if, so if we can do that with the porch, what, what are your thoughts on the garage? The garage itself? Yeah, the rest of the garage. Um, um, you know, it's... <coughs> Well, I think we, we're going to wait and review. see a little bit, have staff. Yeah. I, I, think, the, I think that's legit. Yeah, I, I think that I like the idea of the heavier cornice at the garage and at the porch. And I think that if you could build, you know, like Michael had shown, that you limit the size of the actual railing, railing yeah. above and, and get that cornice to go up into that and be part of the railing and be a toe kick. Our tow area, that'd what be... What we could do is we could get, you know, permission to go forward with the, you know, project, and if we don't agree with what, you know, Michael wants, we can bring it back to the commission. If we sit down and we mm -hmm. all come to, uh, you know, terms with it, then he could just make a, uh, you know, staff approval. But if, yeah. if we right. can't come to terms on it, then we would just have to come back and you know, present it and uh, make our case. I, I don't see that happening, though. Do, I, do, I, I you, do you the, think the, that the banister's like the last thing you're going to put yeah, out? I mean, it, what kind of schedule are you on? It, would you would it would it slow the project if you came back next month and 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 presented a baluster? It, it would be because you know yeah. it wouldn't be that the, what's decided for the balusters is also going to decide what we do for the trim, the rest of the garage. It's it's a whole package that we're going to put together and that we'll work on, uh, you know, with uh, with Michael. So it's it's not like we can just save. Part of it, if, if we're if we're okay with a certain section, we're going to be okay with, uh, uh, you know, with everything. The, the 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 issue with timing, excuse me, is um, is 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 not uh, just just with this approval, but it's going to be a couple, probably another week to ten days at the building department. That's why I'm suggesting I would feel very comfortable if, if the applicant is to work with the applicant. On several designs and bring those back to the commission because I think by the time well, he's the talking about not done, coming back to the commission, though. I, I understand, but what I'm what I'm saying, I would feel most comfortable with if it's okay with the applicant is get the permit issued. They're not going to have the concrete and the framing all poured by our next meeting by the time it gets approved. I would doubt. Um, it, it would be close, but there's close. a chance that uh, you know we. But I think we could come up with a couple of options that you're okay with that, you know, I think um, matches the, the, the idea of the Greek Revival, bring, bring it back to the commission, because it's a major element uh, on the house, even though you're not going to see it except from Peyton Street. Um, it is a major element. I would feel more comfortable that the commission actually reviews that element and, and says, one, yes, one we're all on the same page. I was looking for staff approval. What we do uh, to the porch is going to directly tie in what we do to the... Uh, uh, you know, to the garage, because if we say we're going to, you know, mimic what's across the street, 
we, we may decide what we want to the garage after we take that porch apart. Right. So we take the porch apart and you say, okay, based on what we see, this is what I want you to do. And then based on that, this is what we want the garage to look like. That could slow us down because we would start working on the porch, uh, you know, immediately. You know, we demo to find out what's, uh, you know, you know what's needed. Mm -hmm. You know, do we need more concrete piers that we'd have done at the same time as the, uh, the driveway? So while, while it's possible anything could slow us down, it's it's possible that I'll have to send all the workers home for a while sure. and come back because of uh, everything. So it, it would uh, it would work great for us. And like I said, it, it was it was difficult to. To work out these deal details in advance, or else we would have been happy to. Mm -hmm. uh, what we'd like is to get, you know, get approval for the, uh, uh, for it, you know, an agreement that it, that's a certain style we'll design by. Michael has to approve that uh, uh, design, and if we don't agree with his design, we have to come back. But if we can comply with his wishes, you know, we can move forward. It's it wouldn't be so much the garage. The fact that the garage and the porch is all, all has to be designed and brought in together, and I don't want to lose all the time on the. But the massing of the garage is not going to change. No, not the, size the yeah, so how do we right. feel about the garage, the footprint, the massing? I'm, um, I'm fine. Okay. What's, the, the the, what's the material on the, on the, <coughs> the sides of the garage? What's the, envelope, the envelope for the garage? Is it cedar cladding? Is it for the garage? The walls. Cedar. Okay. Right. Right. Yeah, we, we wouldn't go with the hardy board or anything like that because uh, they're getting the age of the building, you know, the, 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 you know, the, it, it's just that it wouldn't go with all the brick when we're trying to make all that brick pop on there. And then are you intending to, to, to stain the cedar to match the brick or paint the cedar to match the, it. so you're going to, and you're thinking paint white, white, I think yeah. I heard you or say. Red. I think the drawing showed white. Paint it white. Yeah. Oh, I see. I, I think that what I'm comfortable is approving, uh, we don't have to approve the demolition on the porch, obviously, but, you know, approving, um, the work on the porch and figuring out what's there, and then um, approving the, the garage so you can get started on your concrete, you can get started on your stud work, you can pretty much do everything. But those final details, I think, should actually come before the commission, because that's an awful lot to ask of Michael to try and, I mean, while he's, he's very good at what he does, um, to try and know what everybody thinks. But he's only half time. That's the and problem. he's only half time. Yes. So is that acceptable to the we, commission? That would pretty much preclude us from starting that uh, that porch anytime soon. We would have to start that uh, uh, you know porch. You know we'd have to do a lot of guesswork on what we want to look like. Do that porch right before the next you know meeting because when we take all that stuff down, we're putting temporary supports up there, mm -hmm. and you know we we just can't leave that for a month. Uh, you know on there. That's like, like I said. We're hoping to take the take that porch apart, see if there's anything in there that gives us a direction on what it, you know, what it looked like, you know, design the garage to that, uh, you know, to that same standard. And um, I want to make sure I'm hearing exactly, I, th I think I'm hearing two I'm things. Hearing two different you're, you're, things you're, you're, the commission's not asking for the porch work to be held off. You're okay with whatever's revealed, or are you asking? I'm, I'm trying to figure out what's, what's the commission's I, I think the size, shape, massing, and everything is okay, mm -hmm. and quite frankly, you know, once they do a little bit of demo, I would be fine with you uh, reviewing that with with uh, with Joe as well. I mean, the porch, uh, the porch. Is that so, what all the is building? But the, the porch, garage, I thought you were going else. to go with what is indicated by. What the I'm kind of hearing is we're okay with the, the garage being framed up, even sided. You know, obviously the concrete uh, and working on the porch to figure out what we're going to do, mm -hmm. and then. So that means getting us a building permit, and then we would review the detailing of basically the garage and, and the railing. Mm -hmm. And, and it's, it's really just the it north. either gets approved or, uh, by Michael, or he, you know, he says, no, you better bring it back to everybody. But some, some of the construction, if, we, if we're going to build some sort of base and have the railing come off, off a base, some decorative base, you know, we we might be doing stuff a little bit differently then during the building. So we, we don't want to build anything that we have to take down because we, we take another, uh, uh, you know, direction on it. Can you go to oh. the next slide, the, the one that, uh, the one that shows the heavier cornice? Yeah. There you go. This one here? Yeah. So I guess what is your timing? So if it gets, a, if it gets approved tonight, 
then what happens? Uh, well, you know, we would get the uh, you know building permit on there. We'd, mm -hmm. we'd have somebody come start the excavation. Right. We have the people hired, ready to go. Mm -hmm. So they would start it. They pour it. We'd you know we get the, the garage framed. I've I've had guys working on the inside, but we're limited to work that doesn't require a uh, right. building permit. You know, patching all the cracks. You know, uh, fixing the windows, caulking everything, and <clears throat> you know, pretty soon. Uh, you know they'll be done with that and if I don't have work for them they'll go on to their next job yeah I'll have to get so where will you be four weeks from now pardon me if you got the go-ahead tonight where would you be four weeks from now I I think you know I, I don't think that we would we would have you know I think the garage would be well on its way up I, I don't think we would have the railing and stuff my, my only concern you talked about you know the uh, not such a long railing some sort of decorative uh... well I, th I think there's several ways to go I mean again I don't want to design the fly here, although I know the commission used to do that, but just looking at 128 uh, North uh, first across the street, that's a pretty deep section from the um, mm -hmm. bottom of the, the porch lintel beam to the top of the roof structure there with that, that built up. I mean, if that was something that would work, that, that, and then that put a small railing, railing on top of that, I think that's, you know, that's not gonna, that's not gonna alter a lot with framing, I don't think, um, but I think that's kind of what uh, yeah, you were kind of leaning. Towards I'm that. kind of leaning towards that, which is, and it, it's how you handle the corners and how you handle the actual railing on top. That I think is, and it's difficult to even see from the sketches that we have on here to see what we're approving per se. You know, I mean, it. It. I'd want to see. These drawings are. If this is the only thing you've seen, they're fuzzy. Yeah, that's the only thing and, we. Yeah. And, and the details are sharper than that. Posts are very similar to the posts up here in the house across the street. Mm -hmm. Actually, uh, the porch detail here, you can see we have uh, a fascia board mm -hmm. and then another fascia board sticking out where it projects with the, with the gutter on it, which is again very similar to that. Yeah. What it doesn't, the only thing it doesn't have is that projection mm -hmm. above mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. gutter line, which to my mm -hmm. eye, does it make all well, I, I actually like I like the lower west elevation. I think that that really does. Yeah. I just and and I I agree with. I will. I, I'll back up. I, I like what Michael's done on you know lowering the fascia. Um, Colin, Just the railing. If uh, if we're if we're matching the finish of the garage, so you know we're we're comfortable. We ha we have the roof up, everything. Mm -hmm. We're just a matter of uh, you know, the we had, added the roofing material because we still have to put the railing on there. I, I don't think we would we would get there at all. So if it's just the railings coming back for it, I then I would feel comfortable with that. So we can take the porch apart. You know, like you and I discussed. Uh, we'll we'll look at it with everything off. Decide what detail was actually there. Uh, do the porch based on that detail. Build the garage based on that detail, and then make a discussion on the railings. If we could do that in house, we could come back so just for the railings. That's what I would suggest. That's what we were thinking. Yeah, I, I think yeah, we can do that. Yeah. See that, that? I think this is. This right. doesn't feel yeah. thick enough. No, it doesn't. How but does the commission feel that about looks, that? That looks thick enough, though. See, this is different than that, and that's right. my point. See, right. right here. You, you only have six inches from the top of your garage door yeah, to the top of the part of that problem. But so we could run this line all the way through too. But but can but, you beef that, up the that, whole? But that garage door looks too tall. In, in other words, you don't have enough uh, enough so space for your roof. Oh, we'll work it out. You see, you come you can come down to here, yeah. and our floor joists are running this way. Well, then where is your garage door going to go? Because you can't put the garage door right against. You the, need about yeah, an eight inch or you've got, you've got a eight to right here. Eight to ten inches at least, or right. twelve. I mean, I think I think we've the done one twelve. The proportions here are and quite right. I'm calling this. Well, you you could be right. I'm calling this as an eight foot high garage door. It could be a seven if you if one wanted to. This is this is six eight right here. See, I think that that'd be. Yeah, and see, I think I think I think I think I agree. I think that looks close. I think like a seven uh, yeah, zero with with a with yeah, with a okay. tran. But it, it it's 
this is Which elevation very loose. We're, to we're to the okay. north elevation. The north one? I okay. Don't, it might be on the next one, too, is what we're looking at for the, for the drawing. We can't do anything that would raise the garage at, at all. Well, oh, I know, because you're, you're stuck, that, you're stuck you're with stuck the level. You're stuck with that, but what we're saying is that there's not enough room well, to put is, joists yeah, with an eight-foot door? Well, we, can, we, don't, we don't have to have an eight-foot door. Does he have a section? Nine-foot all. But this remember, is the bathroom. You get this spaceship board running over the top of the garage door. Yeah, I know. I, I know you, you, so, and your joists are you up got there. a two. You got a two by ten ledger there, and, and joists. Well, you know. right. So, so how do we okay, handle so this if the drawings are not? Staff I mean, I've been out field measured, and I'm pretty sure this works. Again, my rec my recommendation, Chairman, is that if the concept of the opening the porch, subject to the information that's revealed through demolition and the massing and the general configuration of the garage is acceptable, um, I think you could approve that portion because the rest could be an, uh, are, is, is architectural details added to the basic form. Right. And again, I know that um, the applicant and Joe, think, Joe thinks it's going to happen a little quicker. I'm thinking that in four weeks they might not be as far as they think they're with Memorial Day and, and permits and what have you. That by the time the next meeting comes around, I think we will probably have met a couple of times, come up with a couple options maybe that we think are, are um, appropriate. And we could bring those back to the commission, be the first thing on the agenda, probably be a very quick right, discussion. Just in case we move quick, if, if we can be doing the porch based on your discussions and just put, put in the details on the upper half of the garage, you know, per your instruction next month, we're able to keep going mm -hmm. and uh, we'll get a general direction from you for the porch and then we'll come back for the uh, railings and top of the garage. Well, uh, quite frankly, work. now I'm really concerned about the garage door because that is something that you're going to have to frame in. Yeah, and. You know, you've got a ten, uh, um, a two by ten joist um, on an eight foot six uh, garage, which gives brings you down to what seven foot eight. But you've got an eight foot door. The the numbers aren't adding up. So the front of the garage is not. Um, how does that not get, mathematically making sense? How does that get worked out? Then? And then exactly, how does that get worked out? Because that's going to really change what that front elevation is going to look like. I think I think again from walking the house, the top of the deck has to sit at the at a certain elevation for it to be accessible from right. the main floor. And, and we so, have to take the driveway down because new code says we have to have that you know uh, gas curve four inch gas gap. So where you know the, the measurement between, from the uh, the driveway now which is about even with the garage floor and where we can go will actually be about four inches difference because we need to bring that you know four inches down so you'll step into the basement so we'll lower that you know one one point we will still pitch the garage forward so we'll lower it four inches pitching forward then we'll pick it back up going on to the street the slope isn't that bad on the side street the slope is East and West, not right. North and, and South. And, and quite, quite frankly, the, the North Wall could be pretty much left as an open, one big opening, um, subject to them doing their right. all their final drawings, what have you, um, with their span. And I think the big question is not going to be whether the garage door fits in with structure, but if they're going to put an, an overhead garage door operator in it, um, you're going to have to go to a low uh, clearance operator, and that still mm -hmm. requires a certain height. Okay. So I think that that detail... Um, can be worked out and brought back to you if you want to see the north elevation and the railings. Um, I think well, I'm just wondering if we approve this, we're approving these drawings, and then you get in the field and find out that it won't work. Right. And because you're going to have and to place that header. In case, you know, we, you know, Michael can just pull the plug and we have to come back here next month. We, we would have worked out all of these details, you know, just, mm -hmm. you know, things came up where we couldn't because we, yep. we were prepared to do was necessary. I was even going to talk to the building department about letting us, you know, strip some of that down on the inside without mm -hmm. taking the, uh, the, the the porch walls down, taking some to the top, see if we could do it. Uh, you know, constraints just came up to keep us from, uh, right. uh, you know, from doing it. So we're still willing to take direction on it. We we just wouldn't want the uh, everything to come to a, you know, a screeching halt. So if we got a, approval for you know what was there, the design would be based on what we see on the porch the largest discussion is 
then top of the garage, and we come back with a couple options to be approved next month. Uh, you know, we'd be able to stay on schedule, and uh, you get to, to approve the issue. That seems to be of the most. And, and if the drawings don't don't work, if the drawings don't work, then we stop. He just, he just puts a stop to the whole thing, and we have to come in. And or you have to rip out, you know, a header. That's. Yeah. Not a problem. First of all, that header is basically a non-bearing header. We'll be running our joist east and west from the new wall and over. I've got a dimension here. If you are you, you familiar with the building, uh, that, yes. what, that north yes, elevation, yeah. the lower part is uh, all black and it's kind of stone. That's a, that's nine foot seven to the top of that. Okay. That's what we're aiming for. Nine foot seven. For your roof height or the. Top of the roof. Top of the roof. And that, that's existing. You're actually going to be digging out a little bit below that, um, yeah, what you've discussed. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, so okay. I don't think it's a problem. Joe, could you repeat what you just said? That So this month, we approve the massing. We approve um, everything but the details in the garage and the f north elevation. So you can get started, and then that comes back before the commission. Uh, next, next month, month. I to just say kind all of the details on the garage because some of the details are going to be based on what you want us to do on the porch. Right. It's, it seems to be from roof up is the biggest concern. So we will not put the roof on or the railing system on. We'll come up with a, a couple different options or maybe luckily, you know, one option that we agree upon and we'll bring back that uh, back next month. But I think exposing the porch, uh, Michael's going to take a direction and we're probably going to follow it on, on what the the, the bold plan will will be for the wood, so then we can start building the garage. And it may turn out you're you're right. Anything can happen to cause you know a month from now. You see, weeds growing there because we're behind. We we just don't know. Right. Uh, but just in case everything keeps moving as quickly as it has been moving, uh, and this way we're not doing the one thing that seems to be the biggest concern right. and how we address the roof and above the railing system. We can bring so. all that back next month. What we're saying is staff approval on the details for the porch to match whatever becomes visible. <coughs> and then um, the foundation and the walls um, for the garage, but the details will be coming back next month for the garage. The roof and the, the banister. I, I don't know if that's what we're saying. Aren't, aren't, Michael, wouldn't the detail for the garage match whatever? Uh, is dictated for the front porch. Wouldn't that be? Uh, we, we would have to follow what was. If, if we're, if Michael gets to, to dictate, this is how the front porch goes. I think we have to, and I would want to follow that same standard on the garage. So if we're agreeing to one, we'd have to agree to the other. Well, yeah, but Michael wouldn't be dictating what's on the porch because that's going to be informed by what you find, right? Right. But he's going to prove it, though. He's going to. He's going to. I, I think. I think. I would appreciate the word "approve" rather than "dictate" <laughs> myself. But uh, but uh, that's just me, I guess. But I, again, you're, I, we're going to end up with a detail that becomes evident on that front porch, and it may have to be adapted somewhat to work at the back. And I think that's the concern: is what that ad adaptation uh, looks like. But I, yes, we are going to definitely take the key. Uh, elements of the front porch to the garage um, so that should you know at least be at the starting point but it might be adaptable a little bit here and there so does the commission if, feel if, comfortable with that that it, element would, would okay. naturally come back okay. to the garage yeah yeah the, the the only question i have is what if you get in there and you can't find anything do you default back to what we're seeing here on the lower west elevation well i mean that my suggestion would be again because the house across the street is a little bit later but it's contemporary yeah. to this one. I certainly think that house provides a lot of clues as to what the proportions and the details were in Geneva in 1850-ish. Uh, okay. I mean, that would be my suggestion. I mean, we, we've got very good examples of Greek revival all through, through Geneva that retain a lot of their historic proportions. So that's the best place to look is out into the community. I like the proportions of the lower west elevation anyway. I mean, I think that's the, that's a, it has a nice feel to it. It does. Right. Does yeah. someone have the confidence to put a motion together? <laughs> to explain everything that we've talked, to, talked about? <laughs> oh. Let's, let's review what we're saying here. <laughs> uh, we're, gonna, we did. we're going to approve the size, uh, shape, and massing of the, or of the design as it sits. We're going to uh, allow uh, construction to begin. And we're going to uh, have details reviewed by staff 
on the porch, and they're going to uh, reflect what they discover from the front porch. Is that clear enough? Our return next month for the porch deal. Uh, for for the railing. for the railing detail of railing detail. Yeah. for the roof and the railing. Yeah. So is everyone comfortable with that motion? Was that a motion? Yeah. Oh, I thought I was just. Can, can I, what we were Celeste? About. Can you read back the motion? No. Yeah, <laughs> 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 but you've been typing. What did you say? <laughs> Celeste, you can read it back. It might not make sense. <laughs> Let's back to my recording. Um, for this, we're going to approve the size, shape, and massing. I'm um, going to allow the construction to begin. I'm uh, going to have the details reviewed by staff. Uh, what the railing details? Porch. Or porch. porch. The porch, porch details. Yes. We can do this together. Porch details uh, will be reviewed by staff, which will reflect what is discovered from what? The front the porch. porch. The the front porch. Is okay. open. Yeah, we, we want to make sure we distinguish between the front porch and the back porch. Yeah. Okay, that's about as far as I got. Okay. Is that clear or not? Okay, one more time. Read it and loudly. Um, I move to. Well, well, I can do Hiller. We'll make it official. Oh, yeah. God. Okay. <laughs> uh, move to approve the size, shape, and massing of the garage. As presented. Uh, uh, at 127 as presented. All right, as presented. Allow the construction to begin on what, the garage? Yeah, on the garage. Yes. Garage. Uh, and to have the porch details, this is the back porch details? Or should no, it's front, it's front, 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 front porch. porch details reviewed by staff, which will reflect what is discovered. That is. Will reflect. Which will be, inter which will be interpreted which will at be the New garage edition. Which will be interpreted? At the new garage edition. At the new garage edition. Isn't that what the commission's saying? Yeah. Al, is that correct what your I'm motion said? That, yes. <laughs> <laughs> All right, okay, second? second. I'll second it. Uh, okay. All right. We want to say something in there about them coming back for final approval of the. On the, on the roof of <coughs> the railing system. Excuse me. What if it's really simple and Michael can just say, yeah, just do that? Is that good enough? That's fine right. with me. If it gets a little bit more complicated or interpretive, then can, they would have to Can come we back. direct staff to say, if if it's a no-brainer? Take that in the motion. Describe no-brainer. Yeah, yeah, exactly. That's, I think that's difficult to describe no-brainer. Yeah. Right. I mean, Maybe if, it, if we the know, solution I'll know is just so apparent. If the detailing is yeah, no. <laughs> I, I was getting the sense that there were some commissioners that would like to see the, de the detail on the railings come back. Okay. And that would not hold us up at all. Okay. So, so, let's, yeah, let's do so that. So adding then details of the railing to return next month. Yes. Okay. Now we got that. All right. Wonderful. Second. I second oh, it. Sinky. Okay. We're done. No, we have to. We have to. Oh, we have to vote. We're done yet. Mm -hmm. Alpha but Aye. Hi, Anderson. Aye. Filler. Aye. Salmon. Aye. Uh, Zinke. Aye. Velmer. Aye. Roy. Aye. Motion carries. All right. Alex, Thank you. can I ask one more thing? This has nothing to do with the <coughs> permit, but I just, is this slope actually that close to the window's edge? Yeah. You, you may want to consider me. scooping that up. Yeah, yeah. Well, I've talked to Joe about uh, that. We'll, we'll All right, while they're yes, talking, uh, uh, 212 South History. Now. I, just, I, I knew that you'd get it, but I just, I had to say something. Before I head to the podium, I just want to remind the commissioners I've given you a little uh, uh, cheat sheet, if you will, of the evolution of 212 Fifth Street, because that will be very instrumental in understanding um, um, the window discussion. Um, the house um, at 212 North Fifth Street was built in um, nine different building campaigns, and that does have an impact and a bearing on the windows and the condition of the windows and, and the relocation of windows. So if you'll bear with me, I'm going to pull up a different file. Has this house been before us before for something? Yeah, multiple, yeah. Been before us many multiple times. times. Okay. Multiple times. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Remember the I sleeping we already dealt with the windows. We have it. Maybe it was the garage. I don't remember. Yeah, the and then there was some, like stairs going down into the basement. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Same house. Okay. Are there actually thirty? I'm going to turn the point over to house? Ken uh, Overstreet from Avondale okay. Custom Homes. I don't know which order you want to go in. 
I think the green jumps off the page. Um. Oh, <laughs> There's a hard copy floating around, so they've got the big version of it. There's a full set for any count. I don't know if you want to point out particular oh, images that were just submitted. How's everybody? Good. 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 Things are going really good on the project. Yes. Has everyone been out to the? Yep, the I have. Campbell. Yep. I've progress? gone by. I haven't. I haven't like gone on the property or anything. We just uh, we're wrapping up two of the houses, 204 and 522, and just broke ground on 516. And, and la landscaping is going in. Landscaping looking, is going in. Looking, looking very nice. Yeah, it looks really good. good. Glad you like it. Yeah. So now we've we've turned our attention back over to 212 South Fifth Street. Um, we did present back uh, September 2014. We submitted exterior photos showing the exterior windows, the hand railing, the doors, everything that deal with the exterior. And then we also submitted interior photos at that time. Uh, so the main focus with this this meeting is a review is to go over the existing windows and uh, replacement windows that we're proposing. Um, the, the packet, I think the first page shows a window schedule. Mm -hmm. um, we have roughly about 32 windows uh, that are historic windows that we're proposing to restore. We have 18 windows that we're proposing to replace. Um, three of those 18 are doors. Uh, Michael and I have been through the house. We went through each and every window to decide which one needed to be restored and which one could be replaced. Mm -hmm. So that's indicated on this schedule. Um, and also in that packet, I believe, is the evolution of the house, of how it evolved. Uh, there's about, I believe, nine, nine different additions to this house over the period of time. Um, and are we saying 1840? Yes. 1840. Um, starting out with the two original windows in the back of the house, all the way up to uh, the latest addition in the front, which was uh, pretty much turning it Victorian. So we have multiple different windows in the house. Um, we have everything from 1 over 1, 2 over 2, 4 over 4, 6 over 6, 12 over 12. These windows have been moved all over the house. 
from addition to addition. So where there might have been a two over two window has now been moved to the attic and a one over one window has been put in place or there's been replacement pillow windows. There's been uh, a variety. So we did our best to go through uh, to find out which windows really need to be restored and which could be replaced. So I think we pretty much got all of the, the original windows which are in need of repair and restoration um, on this list. Uh, we did submit, uh, the same time this was submitted, Eric Nelson did a review of those windows and uh, he asked that some of these windows, even if they're historic or not, be tempered and I wanted to get some input on that as well in this meeting. Um, if that's going to be required, do we have to temper the entire window and, and so forth? Um, so I'd like to open it up for any questions and then I'll move on to other sections. So is that in our purview to require whether it's tempered or not? That's actually the building uh, division's um, requirement and so where they are requiring tempered windows now Eric has agreed to work with us um, mm -hmm. in, in certain instances but there are several windows where they by code uh, are required because walls have been moved internally um, the the policy has been of the building division to make windows code compliant where new rooms have been created in existing buildings so they do um, have that um, ability to identify that but Eric is willing to work on certain windows if uh, if, if, if it becomes problematic Right. Well, the, the ones that I'm in particular are the first original windows that are in there, and there's a door next to those. And we're replacing the door, which now is within swing of that first original window. So do does, does those windows get tempered, or does that stay original? But we can have that discussion. What uh, um, uh, Ken's speaking about, if you look at your little, again, your little evolution cheat sheet the original windows are in that orange square at the rear of the building typically we do not review um, the uh, um, the uh, the rears the rear sections of buildings however that is the oldest part of the house it's actually built with vertical plank and timber construction very rare in Geneva and the two original windows are still there so um, Avondale has committed to keeping the, the two walls that are intact and those two windows in their original location. Um, and so again, it's on the rear of the building where we really don't have purview. However, it is the oldest section of the house and uh, dates the earliest date years of um, Geneva settlement. So again, I think that with some discussion on that, whether there's a tempered panel um, installed over the window, which has been done in some historic homes, um, or just a discussion with uh, um, uh, Eric, that that's a historic element. We can probably have that discussion with Eric and Dustin. Um, the, um, but I would think a tempered panel would be preferable over replacing the glazing in the historic uh, window. What number windows are we talking yeah, about? Yeah, 27. Thank you. 27 and, and 20. If you look uh, the, at the, the two 27. In the west elevation, right? Uh, <coughs> the six over sixes. Yes. I gave up my copy, so I'm trying to go by memory. West elevation. And what's there that code is requiring tempered? It's within 18 inches of a door swing, door opening. Correct. We are, we're, we're going to restore the uh, windows. We are going to be putting um, tempered storm windows on the interior, which might Fix it around them. Yeah. Instead of the tempered windows being on the outside like storm windows, we want to preserve the look on the outside, so we're moving the storm windows to the inside, which is a one clear panel that you will not see. Sounds like a nice simple solution. And before Ken gets too far into the discussion. I do want to point out that the Illinois Historic Preservation Agency has also walked through the house um, as part of a consideration for a potential tax assessment freeze project. And they have also um, made recommendations and identified um, uh, critical windows that they are concerned with. Um, 
and, and just to be clear, that to make Ken's job even a little more complicated, our window policy is a little more strict as far as what is considered visible from the uh, public right-of-way than what the Illinois Historic Preservation Agencies is from a tax assessment um, assessment. Um, they're encouraging the uh, preservation of some of the very historic windows around the back of the house, but are not, it's not a requirement for the tax assessment freeze. So Ken's trying to please is probably- Is this taking into account IHPA and Geneva's this are and your and are you cool with this? Yeah, I, uh, you're using all kinds of new terminology tonight, but I'm cool <laughs> with it. Um, and I, but I do not dictate. Ruby. But uh, uh, the, the um, yes, I am fairly comfortable with what Ken has proposed here, um, and and I and I and I believe that it has, it satisfies IHPA from the discussions I heard that day. So um, it's over and above what they right. Expect. Mm -hmm. Okay. So really what we're talking about is that middle column says proposed replacement. Right. Because we really don't care if they're restored or well, maintained or whatever. So that honestly, not having actually gone through the house and looking at the windows, we're going to have to take Michael's perspective. Mm -hmm. well, that's why we had Michael out there, so at right. least someone got to see what was um, intact. So I'm comfortable with that. And the windows that are being proposed to be replaced in... I, I think six of them are actually like 1980s um, replacement windows with uh, grills between the glass. They're not his, they're not even historic windows, and the the, the um, proposal is to return those back to a um, one over one a one over one wood window that um, matches what the historic photographs show in those locations. So it's actually re it's the, the 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 net result is to uh, return the appearance of the house back to what it looked like the majority of its uh, post 1896 uh, remodeling. So it'll be a majority of one over one and two over two windows. I will say Ken and I have had several discussions how to present this because it is probably the most complicated window package I have mm -hmm. seen in a very very long time anywhere. Um, this is a very very complex house both construction wise design wise condition wise um, it's just very complex by the way I would like to compliment you Michael on this handy dandy chart this could not have been I mean it looks simple but it could not have been easy to put together it was took a great, little thinking great for Michael to come through and actually see the walls in the construction stage so he could put that together because otherwise we wouldn't have known the history of it mm -hmm. It also explains a lot of the structural issues. Uh, when, when they first bought the property, I was trying to encourage them to preserve as much of the plaster as possible, but it was very difficult to understand why a house was cracking the way it was. Um, once the plaster was removed and we saw what, how the framing had been altered over the years, it was very evident why the plaster was cracking the way it was. So um, it was scary. Was the lath holding it up? <laughs> it wasn't scary. the lath holding it up, but there's a lot of hinged uh, connections in the framing um, because of the expansion over time. Uh, in fact, the upper attic wall is out of plumb by about, what, nine inches at the, at the worst condition? Out of plumb by nine inches? <laughs> yeah, balloon, it's all balloon framed, and it's, it's balloon framed on top of balloon framed. So it's, uh, it's quite, uh, quite a renovation. There's been quite a bit of structure added in the house. Um, we've managed to reuse a lot of the, the woods. We're trying, we're, we've saved everything, and you know, we're just, we're trying to make it last, you know, 100 years, 200 years. You know, I think it's, I think it's worth it. Well, I have to applaud you because I think that by your interventions, that is possible. You know, without your interventions, who knows what could have happened. So thank you for that. Thank you. All right, what comments do we have from the commission? That's good. This looks wonderful. Yeah, I'm good. Yeah. It seems like most of the windows are being restored and yeah. retained. What can be and saved is being saved. Yeah. And the replacements that you, that you have proposed here uh, seem to, um, to simplify um, the, the uh, arrangement, the, the unusual arrangement of windows so, so this seems to, to simplify it better so so that the elevations will look more harmonious they are but they they're still with the Queen Anne Victorian mm -hmm. they use different windows mm -hmm. and different divided light um, but it is trying to bring it back to its original state mm -hmm. 
Now you're replacing all the bedroom windows on the second floor. Yeah. Are those the ones that had been replaced previously? Right, in the bay. Uh -huh. One of the interesting observations, and I thought it was just my looking at the building, but uh, Anthony Rabon from IHPA mirrored the same thing. The, um, uh, uh, get the right names here, the uh, uh, Bentley family was involved in the hardware business and it's a very elegant house, but almost all of the materials in it are out of date for the period it was built. And we think they probably were actually using um, remnant things that, that <laughs> may have been in their hardware store that didn't sell that were very yeah. beautiful items um, because um, the, just some of the architecture and the window placement, the window patterns, some of the hardware, it's, it's more of an 1880s vintage rather than 1890s vintage. And uh, the fireplaces, everything, it's, it's a very curious house. Um, uh, which has made the wind understand the windows even a little bit more challenging because even Anthony Rabano said, Where do the 12 over 12s come? I've seen them in Queen Anne's, but not in the attic gables. So it's a uh, it, it's been very challenging to piece it together and come up with a window package that we think is matching the historic photographs and respecting the history of the property. Talk about a piece of, a, of heritage for so many reasons. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right, are we, are we done with questions? Do we understand what's going on. Make a motion. I'll, I'll give it a shot. I mean, it's pretty easy. We're going to, I move that we accept the application for 120, I'm sorry, 212 South 5th Street as presented. For a second. My second. Alpine Alp. Aye. Anderson. Aye. Hiller. Aye. Solomon. Aye. Selmer. Aye. Thinky. Aye. Right. Aye. All right. Thank you. All right. That completes. I would love to come and see the, the property at some point. All right. I'll talk to Mike. Cool. Thank you. Oh, there's that word again. <laughs> uh, that completes the building permit applications. The next item on the agenda is our continued and hopefully final discussion of the draft historic preservation ordinance. <coughs> Thank you, Chairman. I'm going to just uh, basically introduce it uh, to you he uh, from the seat here. Um, the Do you want to stand that long? Um, I don't think you want to look at me standing that long. So the uh, <laughs> modifications to the, uh, the ordinance primarily at this point uh, were grammatical. Um, we have had it reviewed by the city attorney and some additional grammar and clarification. The language was made primarily the um, the most significant or most comprehensive language change was in a few locations. We uh, used the word uh, should where other places in the ordinance had been shall, so it's all been converted to shall. Um, the other um, uh, major element was in some places in the ordinance we uh, used the phrase um, uh, building structures, objects, and sites, and other locations we identify as property. So we have now changed all language to be consistent. Wherever property was mentioned, we now identify as building uh, structures, sites, and uh, buildings, buildings, structures, objects, and sites. I do want to bring uh, the commission's attention back to section uh, 10, 6, 12 on page, should be um, probably page 37. I have a slightly updated version from you. Uh, um, but page 37, um, we, there was um, a request to, by the commission at the last discussion to identify uh, what constituted demolition. Um, and, and so that has been clarified um, in line with what your, what your comments were. Um, and then um, put into a, a bullet point type of, uh, of uh, format instead of a, a, a a sentence format because it got very long and complicated. It was very hard to kind of understand what the intent of the long sentences were. Um, and then the other major change that came out of the last discussion of the commission was um, clarifying what was required as the way of documenting a building that was approved for demolition that may be a historic landmark or what have you. So uh, again, um, on my page 41, um, Could you read that to us? We don't have access to any of that. Oh, it is on your screen. I'm sorry. No, it isn't. Oh, we don't have computers. Are Our computers are all blue screen. Oh. Mine's okay. Oh. <laughs> Good for you. Okay, well, I'm sorry that your screens are blue screen, so I will read that section to you. If you would. 
The commission may delay a request for demolition for a specified period of time, not to exceed 120 calendar days, coincidental to any other request for a delay of demolition, for the sole purpose of requiring the applicant to prepare and submit the following documentation of a building, structure, object, or site that is identified as a historic landmark or a contributing or a significant property within a designated historic district. Um, first requirement A, a site plan at a scale not less than one inch equals 20 feet zero inches. Uh, B, floor plans of each level, scale not less than one eighth inch equals one foot zero inches. C, elevations of each side of the property improvement, scale not less than one eighth inch equals one foot zero inches. And photographs of each elevation and significant interior exterior architectural feature as determined by the commission. Um, photographs shall be clear black and white images. Okay. Just out of curiosity, why, why black and white? Um, black and white is the, the industry standard for documentation because they're actually more clear to see details. When you have color, it blurs the, uh, the detail. Um, and, um, and then that was, again, the same comment that was made uh, under um, the section for the procedure for neighborhood conservation districts. So um, that is um, also... Uh, remember that's an administrative recommendation and so instead of the Historic Preservation Commission it's the Preservation Planner and it's the same language um, but it's only for contributing or significant property within a neighborhood conservation district but it's the same drawing requirements okay. so we made those sections parallel at the request of the Commission mm -hmm. and outside of that um, there are no unless I'm missing some but that was what I had picked up as the uh, primary significant changes at the direction of the commission um, last meet, last month. So is the commission comfortable with that? I, I have one uh, clarification I wanted to find out about. And, and unfortunately, I have no copy. I have no screen. I'm, I'm just going off my notes. So I, I, it's just chicken scratch here. But on page 23, uh, section B, it was uh, standards for uh, designation of uh, historic district. It, it looks like maybe one word was added uh, collectively. Oh, yes. Now, it says they collectively, which I would assume would be, means all. So all have to meet those requirements. Now, uh, the requirements go, are underneath then, and it seemed to me that you could have a historic district and not meet all of those requirements. But if that's in there, it says that you have to have The, the, the phrase have have before was that it was uh, taken... I don't recall the language, but it was taken as a collective entity, I believe, is the phrase that was in there. And that seemed to cause some, con uh, some, some uh, confusion as to exactly what that phrase meant when it was reviewed by city, the city attorney. And so his suggestion was just to use, um, to simplify that, so we changed it to collectively, meaning that the body had to represent these six following requirements. But um, if, if, just, if, does that mean, then, that you could have a district that has a new, your, your designated district, but it has a new house in that area. Sure, because we're looking at the collective body of the entire district. So we're looking at the but overall according character. according to that definition, it can't have a new house in there. So that, at least that's the way I'm reading it. That's why I, 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 maybe I'm reading it wrong, but I, I'm, or maybe a, I wanted to make sure this is what we want to say. Can you... Um indicate what section we're in and, and page 23 it, it's, it's, it's the bottom of page yeah. 23 so it's in section I think I might have a different version here right yeah. it's in section 16 <laughs> I don't 10, 10, 10, 6, <laughs> 10, 6, 7. 10, 6, 7. 10 6 7 10 6 7 um, section B uh-huh standards for designation of historic districts okay that's 22 for me just so you yes. are aware Yep, that's on page 22 on my version, too. The Historic Preservation Commission. Thanks, David. Yeah. Specific. For them, it was page 22, so maybe it's no. right there. Yeah. there. No. Section B. Enough. And I, I think 
Al, the, the question about whether there could be a new building, it says include one or more historic landmarks along with other such building structures, objects, or sites, which, et cetera, et cetera. You can read it yourself. But, um, but you have to get to the, uh, where is the collectively uh, placed? The, the very last. The very last uh, sentence up there. Yeah, on page 22, 22, up at the top, it's the, the very third last third word before uh, the end. Yes. Collectively, the improvements. Collectively, the improvements, properties, and All of the following six requirements. Okay, go down to, can we go down to see what these six requirements are then? So the way you're reading it is the district has to meet all of those. That's it. It must meet all of these requirements. So. Okay, so they're within the boundaries of the city, that's okay. We want to land looks, that's okay. Mm -hmm. uh, or at least right. 50 they're the, years at least old. 50 years old. So if in, in whole or in part, I think that's important. Right, but if it's a new house, if there's a new house. Okay. It's not saying that individually each billion whole or part must be 50 years old. It says that the district must have billions that are at least 50 years old or older in whole or in part. But not not only, yeah. Right. Okay. If that's the this, way it's this interpreted. This is fairly stock language that's come out not only of our ordinance but other ordinances. So. I you just wanted to make sure that it's okay. I wanted to make sure that that was just make sure that that's what we wanted to say. When I read it, it didn't read it didn't read that way to me. I thought so, this, so it Al, sounded like a little bit of a glitch what, in there. What word is it that what's? Well, the collectively uh, put in there to me meant every single one. We want that, that it's all of these. You know, it's all of all basically. Does the word you know? collectively mean every last bit? That's what I would. Is I, I <laughs> collectively to me is all. Well, that's why we had it originally as it's it said something that as a collective entity, I believe is what it said originally, and that as a collective entity, the improvements, properties, et cetera, et cetera. Well, there's still another properties in there. I thought we got them all. Um, uh, the um, again, so maybe the, maybe simplified into collectively doesn't may, actually complicates the interpretation, but. Um, still the meaning is right yeah yeah because what it was referring to was the district as a collective entity and a district does allow for non-contributing buildings for a variety of reasons when you look at the, the regulation or the requirements for historic districts you have to declare which are non-contributing buildings in a district okay okay I'm good with that. So anything else any other comments on that I have a general comment that I'd like to make mm -hmm. if we're pretty much done except for I think so okay uh, I just want to state that I've had concerns from the beginning of landmarking buildings without owners consent mm -hmm. and I've seen I have heard the, the support of that from a lot of different places and I've seen the both sides of it I've also seen a number of um, petitions and emails that have come through my email lately that have said that there are a number of residents that would rather not have a non-owner consent landmarking of buildings. And I understand that the landmarking of buildings without owner consent is a tool to be used in certain circumstances, but I feel that we would be better served to deal with, to try to get people to get owner consent for landmarking of buildings and not do a non-owner consent landmarking. And through education, we should be able to convince the people that own the property that landmarking their property or home would be the best solution. So I just, with with the, what I've seen in the last couple of weeks, I just can't support that portion of this ordinance, that non-owner consent portion of it. And um, I don't think that the residents of Geneva would support it either. 
uh, as a whole. I know there are some that do, and I know that some that don't. But so the rest of the ordinance is okay. I have no issue with the rest of the ordinance. It, okay. It's specifically that non-owner consent. Um, it, it is something that that I just cannot get over. Okay. Any response? That hasn't been. Yeah. We've already I, talked about. I'd be happy to respond. Um, I understand what you're saying. And I do um, understand that we have heard from part of the community. Um, we've also heard from the other part of the community. It is a tool that has that is available to us that has been used very, very rarely. It's one of those things that, you know, you do have um, the responsibility to make sure that it's done correctly. But even if we for the sake of argument, all of us agreed that we should remove the owner consent. I'm not sure that that's a decision that should be made at this level. It has been part of the ordinance since the beginning. It's one of the reasons that Geneva is the stellar historic preservation community that it is today. Um, and it is, we have not received any direction from the city council, who we of course serve at their pleasure, um, to to change that. Um, so, in my opinion, I believe that we should be presenting the ordinance as is, or rather as revised. I I understand what you're saying, and I I I do agree that it has been used rarely, but I think that it. We are, we are, for lack of better words, we are basically a bedroom community. And when you start to deal with people's residents, I think it becomes a larger issue. And I would, I would, I prefer not to see the owner consent or non-owner consent in there. And I think that that's the best way to deal with this. But I just don't think that, that people would, I think it would be a mistake to go in and have someone have their private residence landmarked without their consent, even though it may be historic in nature. And I don't think that that's my basic concern is the residences. Mm -hmm. But I know that you cannot begin to tailor that so tightly Mm -hmm. that that would be the case. So just for the sake of argument, you would be perfectly okay with a major landmarkable, in, or that hasn't been landmarked at this point, being torn down because we could not gain owner consent? I wouldn't be okay with it, but I would understand it. So you would be okay with it? I would not be okay with it. I would not be okay with it. I, I'm not. I'm not this okay. This is the, tool, the only tool I, I, we have I, to I'm not okay that. with them tearing down Sixth Street School, and that's that could happen very easily. Right, and, and would that's have, within the historic district. That is, and so I don't think landmarking even can save every building. So I I think that it's a tool that can be used in effect in 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 a poor way. And I don't want to have that tool in the toolbox. I think a better tool is education. I think, um, if I may, um, I do agree with you that a better tool is education. I also think that we have sort of added an education element into our ordinance, where we have that um, that meeting with Michael at the beginning. Um, we have, um, isn't there? I can't remember. I don't have the paper. In front yeah, of me. There, there's, there's a, a pre-application. There's a pre-application meeting. meeting, and then there. It, uh, Michael had said that he would try and encourage the applicant to talk with the owner of the property. So I think there are steps that we've taken to try and um, make it so it's not going to be abused. Um, and I think we've added a lot of checks and balances, checks and balances into it, you know. Um, and I think you've, <coughs> excuse me, you've even mentioned before, like if, if 
a property owner comes to us, if, if, a, if a property is getting landmarked against their will and the property over, owner comes to us and makes a case for it, you know, we'll take that into consideration. I don't think that it's going to just be landmarked and... No, I don't, I don't think um, it will be landmarked. I don't, I, don't think, I don't think that that's the case. I think that it, it, it's a, I feel it's a blunt instrument. And I think that education would be a much better way to handle it. And I think that even landmarks can be demolished, unfortunately. And, That's true. and it, it's, I wouldn't want to see, I don't like to see the Sixth Street School demolished. I think it's great what they did with the Puroro building. And I wouldn't have liked to seen that go away either. So I'm a, I'm a proponent of preservation. I just think this is the one tool that, that really gets to people and where they live. And I think and that- Actually, that's the point, is where they live. Geneva is the community it is because they had the wisdom back in the 70s or 80s yes. to create this document that gave us power to be used very sparingly in order that we might preserve our heritage. Without that ability to enforce the, the, um, the historic preservation ordinance by selectively and only sparingly using that tool, I'm not sure we'd have the community that we have. I, I respectfully disagree with you. I think that the idea of the historic district was done and I think that that basically, I think that is a better way to deal with this rather than taking one building at a time. Now, again, I understand what you're saying, but I look at the communities around us that don't have this tool. Mm -hmm. And, I look and it's only been used twice in this, this and once it was used poorly. And, and but you actually know, in the once that you're indicating that it was used poorly, it never got anywhere. The whole yeah, but it still slowed down anywhere. the whole process for the people that were doing it. And it, it, I'm not going to get into the semantics of yeah. what happened with right. that. Right. I just think that as a, I see a lot of people that have come and said that this is a problem that doesn't need to be in the ordinance. There is a saying in the law that tough cases make bad law. And in this case, I think that that one instance is going to create a bad situation for the rest of the historic preservation initiatives within the community. I wouldn't disagree with you. I think. Can I, but, jump, can I jump in sure. here? Um, I've been giving this a whole lot of, of discussion. And in our house, historic preservation is something we talk about all the time. Um, it's my avocation, it's my husband's profession. There's the third party situations which really have me concerned. Um, I'm watching my neighborhood. We've only been in our neighborhood 12 years. And as time has gone on, the older people who have loved their houses have died. And their children really have less invested in their house. And the houses have been sold to developers and the developers have knocked the houses down, which has changed the character of our neighborhood. Um, we're in a neighborhood where most of the houses are, uh, are ranches and we now have two story houses which are really almost three stories because of the tall roof lines and that has really changed the whole atmosphere of the street. And as I'm thinking about my neighborhood, which is not in the historic district, I'm thinking about the historic district. Many of the people that I know that live in our, our architectural gems are older and, and will um, move on in some fashion. And there are a number of people that I have talked to who have taken um, reverse mortgages. And I did a little research about reverse mortgages, and I am getting to my point. Um, when the people who took out the reverse mortgage leave the house, the mortgage comes due, and if it can't be paid, the house is foreclosed on. 
And I believe that bankers have less invested in a historic district than the people who have lived there and their neighbors. And I can envision that there may be many situations in the next 20 years in which our gorgeous buildings that everybody goes ah, about may end up in this situation and may be demolished because of that. I, so, can, I, can I just say can one I thing? Finish, please? Yes. So I believe that this particular provision needs to stay in this ordinance in the event that it becomes a problem. I believe it's the city council's role to make a change in this and not our, not our position. You, you were talking about reverse, you were talking about areas within the historic district. Those are already areas that are protected. They're landmarked. You, not, not every building in the historic district is a landmark. There, well, there can, but, but, not, but not every building, but every building in the historic district is land, is basically has to come in front of this body to be demolished. And we have the say to say if we think that it's historically significant and tell them, no, we can't, you can't demolish them. So that doesn't, and we've done that. We've, we've told them that they can't tear down the Pure Oil building. That was in the historic district. So I think that. And then it was the, up to the city council yeah, to. the city council. Disagree. Disagree. Or agree. Agree, correct. Luckily they agree. Correct. I, I, I agree that they, it, was a, it was a good situation that we, we did our job. We preserved the historic district. And we did our job with the 6th Street School. And we preserved the historic district. I'm not against preserving the districts. And I'm not against. I, I'm, a, I'm, I'm just, just simple landmarking someone's home against their consent I think is is I have a big issue with that the, the point is I think that Carolyn was making first off I believe she was referring to her own neighborhood I thought she was talking is, about the historic district no, which well, is not I was, I was saying specifically the situation I've been watching in my neighborhood which is not in the historic district okay and then I'm extrapolating my experience in the non-historic district moving into the historic district because the, because the population in Geneva is aging. But, and that also, um, Paul, kind of what you're saying is that in the future, there can be no new, or there should be no new landmarks, and there should be no new. No, I'm not saying that at all. I'm because saying. Because without owner consent, the, the collective community can't say, you know what, Mr. Banker, who has gotten this building, however, this is important to our community. This is important to our heritage. We, as a group, want to landmark this. And in your scenario, the banker or the bank can say, you know, too bad. No, that's not what we want you to do. And we would have no ability to stop. We're not talking about somebody's home. In this instance, we're talking about an investment or a, a, a property, property that is not attached to. I, I understand what you're saying. Um, as I've as I've thought about this, um, I've kind of taken the perspective out of the ordinance and into the people that are involved in this, and I think it's the people that is important. I think we should leave this tool in the in the ordinance, and if there's a problem with the people involved, that's I think that's where the problem happens. The problem happens with um, what I've heard out there is that this rogue historic preservation commission is going to start creating districts all over the town, and I don't think of the seven people that are here. I don't think we're, we've got an agenda to do that, mm -hmm. and I think that. If they did have an agenda to do that, they should be removed. Or the other, uh, the other part of this process that is in the ordinance is that if the Historic Preservation Commission decides that we think a building should be landmark or a district should be created, we do the research, we go through the process, the final, you know, the final decision comes from city council. Mm -hmm. So you've got how many people do we have, 12? 10 people. Isn't it 10? 
Um, so you've got 10 people that have the ability to say yay or nay. And I just, I do not, I think it's the, the people that we have to watch, not the ordinance that's being written. I think for those those special pro times when an institution from out of town, a bank, or some other entity um, is going to affect the character of our of our community, we need to have a tool that allows us to stop that. I don't think there's anyone on the commission or on the city council that is out looking for a land grab and. And uh, it would take an awful lot of people, bad people, to make something like that happen. So I, I mean, I think it should remain in there, but I, but I don't think there's anyone that is wanting to use that, unless all other um, options are exhausted. It's the tool of of last resort. <laughs> right, and I think, I think what I've heard is that. People think that that's the tool of first resort. And I was on the commission in 1993 is when I started. And the commission that was in place at that time, a lot of them thought that way. They thought that, okay, there's a property that wants to be torn down or overly improved. And first thing we need to do, that was their tool of first resort, was we need to landmark that property so that they can't do that. Um, they never actually did it, and um, nothing like that ever went forward, but that was their thought. Because ultimately, we're a, a, neighbor, we're a community of people, and we're not pitting neighbors against neighbors. What we're doing is, as a community, in these instances, we're saying that our heritage is at stake here. So I respect your opinion. I just okay. if if I can comment, yes. you know, since we're all, you know pitching, you know, I've thought about it too because you know, I, I, and and I understand the sensitivity of the matter because per, you know a person's home is their home, mm -hmm. and nobody wants to be you know dictated to what's going to happen to a home that you're paying for and living in and growing your children in and that type of a thing. <clears throat> However, I also feel that as, as Jen had brought up. You know, there is an educational aspect of it. There is a situation where, you know, people are going to be brought together and be given, you know, laid in front of them exactly what's going on here and why it's going on and what are the benefits and what are the negatives and such. And it would be encouraged for the, ho for the, owner, the homeowner whose consent was not sought to be brought into that meeting. Now, once again, as you said, we're dealing with people. If it comes to that point and the homeowner doesn't want to come to the meeting, well, there's a bigger issue involved here. Uh, the other aspect of it is that there are also many layers of checks and balances in here between public meetings, mm -hmm. between not just a simple vote, but a, a two-thirds supermajority vote, not is, only is of the, the commission. Is the two-thirds majority vote still in there? At the council level. At the council level. Okay. So we're, 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 again, an advisory body, so a, 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 we're, we're only making a recommendation, so a two-thirds majority vote doesn't really um, matter here at, the, at this level. But more so at the council level, I mean, you know, it, it, there's going to be a lot of avenues where this situation is going to be brought forth, and and I agree with, with Nanette that, you know, this is, you know, the, the ultimate tool, the, you know, the, the end all of end all tool. And, and I really honestly don't think there's going to be a bunch of people running around r to people's homes, placing land, trying to place landmark status on it, which some people are all worried about, which I mm -hmm. think is a total farce. The, this is going to be in very limited cases. This tool has been in the box here and it's been used twice in the last 20 something years. Uh, and, you know, I think people are getting a little too over-emotional about it and not really thinking about it. And I think there are enough checks and balances. There is enough education that was never there before. There is going to be a lot more public notification of it, so people aren't going to be shocked be be between, uh, between it being noted on websites, between it noted, you know, with public notices of meetings and having meetings here on it that... 
but I think the, the end all of it is, as it's been stated by a multitude of people here, you know, to preserve what has made this town what it is. And the historic district is what it is. And, you know, I, I respect your opinion as we all have our own opinions. But, you know, my, I feel we should keep that tool in the box. Any other comments from the and commission? The, you know, the, uh, I, th I think this ordinance has sort of addressed that. I mean, what, you know, we are so much about compromise here. And I think that the ordinance as it's, as it's written is, has produced a fair balance. I mean, I, I think, you know, the, the tool is left in the box for the city, but, um, They've made it very difficult for an individual to try to landmark a building, almost almost onerous. I mean, it, you've, you've charged the increased fees, you've made the paperwork, the time constraints, and everything else more difficult. So that you know, you you've left it in the city's toolbox, but you've really taken it out of the hands of the of the. Well, the, it's the, still in. It's still someone someone from an outside agency with someone in in Geneva can still do it. it. I mean, it, it, it's not an un. It would be it, very difficult under this ordinance. It, and it should be. Mm -hmm. And that's that's what I'm saying. Yeah, it I should agree be. that it should be. It should be difficult, but I, I don't even know whether, I question whether it's even required. <coughs> that, that. Right, any other comments may, from commissioners? I may make a few comments from staff, just perspective, just because sure. Illinois, we did ask the Illinois Historic Preservation to look at the ordinance. Um, and one of the comments addresses this. Um, Catherine O'Connor, who is the uh, um, local certified local government uh, manager, um, actually was very complimentary of the checks and balances that we put into the ordinance um, that still allows, some fle allows flexibility. And um, she made two references that, you know, even though we have um, uh, made the process m more, uh, I want to say difficult, more, more uh, um, restrictive or more more street more uh, um, rigorous. rigorous rigorous thank you um, that we've maintained due process throughout the, the, the process that every voice is, is is has an opportunity to be heard in the process and that's it's actually earlier than in other cases and for that she was giving us a lot of praise because that is what they look for when they review the ordinances that due process is maintained um, and and she did note that uh, we had raised the bar quite significantly um, in Geneva with the fees, with the educational component, what have you. And I did want to just speak to the educational component because I think, um, Paul, I agree completely with you, education is very important. And I just want to relay, you know, just one example from this week. We had a couple come in here very concerned about what they've been told and what they've been hearing. And um, uh, very concerned that somebody could just landmark their home built in the 1970s um, without them having any knowledge of it. Um, I took that opportunity to explain the entire process to them one-on-one, um, -on -one, and that's the purpose of having that initial meeting. Um, if somebody were to landmark somebody's property um, on a, on a, uh, without their knowledge or consent, that they would be notified. We would get everybody at the table, and we would explain the process completely and 100%. And when the couple left, they said that's not at all how they understood it before they came in. They had a very clear understanding of how the process worked, um, what, that there were criteria for designation, that just because a building is 50 years old um, or is in an area that they thought was targeted for historic district, which is not, um, uh, they, they, they understood that there is a process and that it's not just a slam dunk uh, issue. So I do agree that the education is very important. I'm, I'm very uh, pleased with the input from the commission to get that education process up at the very forefront. So again, um, that's just one example of somebody who came in very, very concerned about what they had been told and what they had read and what had been mailed to them, etc. And by the time we walked through the whole process, they said, well, there's a lot of time for us to respond. There's a lot of time for us to understand. And not every house is going to even qualify to be designated. There's, there's, there's a, you know, so, so that education component is very important. And again, IHPA's comments were that um, we have still, what, what they find is a lot of orders become too inflexible and, and, uh, um, and, 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 and uh, too regulatory. And then there comes a case such as a property that is very beloved in a community and they have no way of protecting it. And again, the, comp the, the comment was, is that we have established a very good checks and balances system here to maintain due process. So I just wanted you all to be aware of that. And that was their major comment in the review of the ordinance. Else? Are we ready to take a vote? Mm -hmm. 
have a motion. Um, well, correct me on the on the language. Um, I move that uh, we accept the Historic Preservation Ordinance uh, of 2015. Um, I think as presented tonight. As, as presented this evening. I think so, or the final draft. Or the I final, yeah, the final draft as presented uh, at uh, our, t our meeting today. Is there a second? Second. Second. Uh, so. Okay. Elplin Elp? Aye. Anderson? Aye. Miller? Aye. Solomon? Aye. Thelmer? Nay. Uh, Zinke? Aye. Chairman Roy? Aye. Motion carries. One. All right. Well, thank you all. This has been a very rigorous, stringent process that we've gone through. And um, so we've approved it. And uh, on Tuesday, next Tuesday, uh, staff is going to present this to the city council and have their commentary and see what they have to say. What I'd ask Paul is if you can be there on Tuesday. Certainly. Because I, in the past when we've come to these appeals or, or um, we've, we've gone to city council, if someone does vote nay, then typically city council wants to know why. And okay. I would rather have you explain it than to me try to, try to portray that and, and do it wrong. Mm -hmm. So I'd appreciate it if you could be there on Tuesday. I will see whether my schedule allows. <laughs> okay. Or maybe you could write something, staff could present it, or okay, just so that you're heard the way you want it to be heard. Correct. All right, so that concludes uh, item number five. The next uh, item on the agenda is the secretary's report. I have a few items this evening. Um, first of all, I wanted to give you an update on the Sixth Street School uh, demolition uh, yeah. process. Um, the uh, county has met with the Illinois Historic Preservation Agency and um, there has been a mitigation plan um, identified for the county um, the, um, to underscore that the city of Geneva was not part of the discussions of what the mitigation would be. That's strictly a, a, a decision of the Illinois Historic Preservation Agency. And what has been agreed to um, by uh, IHPA and the county is to uh, undertake a um, survey of the Geneva Historic District, which includes the two National Register Historic Districts, and resurvey those and update the surveys to reflect um, any changes um, within the district and then make recommendations for boundary amendments. Um, the, uh, as of yesterday, I was informed that a consultant has been approved and selected. Um, uh, so I don't know when the start date is, but uh, once the, um, once the consultant is under contract, this, the demolition uh, can proceed. So um, it does not wait for the survey to be completed. It's once the, the, the survey consultant is under contract. So that is where that process is at this point. Um, there, there were several mitigation uh, offers made, and this was the one selected by the county. Um, we will have a right to review and coordinate with the sur surveyor since that was part of the workload that I was to undertake. It's not going to exactly mirror what uh, the direction I was to take with the survey. So I will be working with the uh, selected contractor to uh, exchange information back and forth so that uh, uh, both the county's goal, this IHPA's goal, and our goal is, is completed. Does this... Does this um, contractor have a name? Um, yes. Um, <laughs> I'm not sure that everything has been signed, um, but it is someone who has worked for the city before. And so I, I'm just, I, I, don't, I don't know if I'm at liberty to say because I'm not sure if everything's been signed. So there was the no RFQ put out? There was an RFQ. I believe five uh, uh, consultants responded to it. Um, there were three consultants, I believe, or two, two or three consultants who uh, turned the project down. Uh, for a variety of reasons. Um, one was because of the very short bidding time that was allowed for the RFQ. Um, but we did get some, we did field some questions here from interested consultants. Wait a uh, minute, I don't understand. Okay. <laughs> okay Ask away. You're, you're, you're saying that the county and IHPA came up with an agreement that if the, if the historic district 
has a new survey done. I'm assuming that, that the, the county is hoping that the historic district boundary will no longer include Sixth Street School. Is that what the, no. what the Or is it just is? a straight up horse trade? No, it's, it's the, the, the idea is when a building is being demolished that is reviewed by HPA, that the community should be getting something back for the, law, the perpetual inter, eternal loss of that building. So they offered three or four um, projects of one, or mitigation efforts. One of the mitigation um, suggestions was to do uh, measured drawings of the Sixth Street School um, to meet the Historic American Building Survey standards, uh, which includes pho pho photography, a history, um, the actual measured drawings, and then create a permanent exhibit that would be put on display in some future building at that site. Um, that was not opted for because the um, demolition could not begin until the measured drawings were completed. All the field measurements were done, and that was going to extend the, the, the date. Um, I don't know what all the other scenarios were, but the, one of the other uh, scenarios that was offered was to update our survey. The, the state was aware that's something that not only is on our list, but it's also on the state's list, that we update our survey and understand what has happened in our district since 1979 when the first district was named. What, are, what, what demolitions have occurred, what new constructions occurred, what historic buildings have been lost, um, so we understand what the boundaries of our historic district look like and make recommendations for uh, amending any boundaries that, the, that IHPA believes would be qualified under the National Register of Historic Places. So it's a straight up horse trade? Yes. So this means the building's coming down? The building is coming down. So all the information that we had received that the state thought it was, a, it was eligible for being um, uh, on the National Register, all of that information has just been overlooked. It has not been overlooked. Um, again, the, the state cannot compel somebody to put a building on the National Register. They can determine whether it's eligible for the National Register. If it's determined eligible for the National Register, then that sets into play what the levels of mitigation may be. If they had determined that it was not eligible for the uh, National Register, uh, mitigation may have been zero, that nothing was required. They just go and we'll, we'll give the, the uh, okay. IEPA the thumbs up to give the demolition permit, and the building comes down and the community gets nothing back. But the feeling was, was that it was one of three documented Frank Brownfield Gray buildings. Frank Brownfield Gray was a significant architect in the area. The building was a significant building with significant architecture, and um, that it, it did represent a loss to the community. So we get something as opposed to nothing. Correct. Um, and, 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 the, and the county does not have to make a good faith effort to find someone to come in and renovate the building, to buy it and renovate it? That they don't have to do that? Um, actually, two of the other offers or the mitigation uh, requests were to either mothball the building indefinitely mm -hmm. um, and the county could still own it. That was not selected. Another one was to um, uh, not accept the offer that's been made on the property and uh, if no other public body wanted to purchase the property, then to put it up uh, at public sale. Um, the county did not opt for any of the three except for the, uh, the survey effort. And there was nothing to, there's nothing that uh, can compel the county to um, choose one over the other. It's, it's, their ch it's their choice as the person applying for the demolition. And someone did make an offer for the building? No, no, no. no. Oh, no, no. I'm misunderstanding that. There was, there was an inquiry about buildings that could potentially be rehabbed, and that particular building met some of the requirements that that company was looking for, but no offers were made. It's the, the way the law works is that publicly owned property is offered to public entities first, and if they all reject it, then it can be put to um, the, for sale to the general public. Any other secretary's report items? Yes, I have a few other things. Um, th we are um, in preservation month, um, and Al Hiller has uh, uh, reinvigorated our walking tour. So if you want us to talk a little bit about resurrected or reinvigorated. <laughs> no, reinvigorated. We, uh, uh, we took the walking tour that we started last year, which uh, was successful. We actually had a lot of foot traffic, a lot of traffic on the on the city's website. <clears throat> we had last year we had a dozen uh, 
buildings along Third Street <coughs> and down along State Street. And uh, if you, uh, there was a, uh, a poster that had a historic picture of the building and maybe a current uh, picture of the building. And then there was a QR code, which if you have a smartphone, you could, uh, you could hold it up to the QR code. And that's a, that's a small version of the poster. But the QR code would open up a, a walking tour that you could get for free then. And then you could follow this. And if you hit the, uh, the numbers corresponding to the building, you'd get a short history and you'd get another, uh, another historic picture on your phone. Um, so this year we, we extended it to a couple more buildings. And uh, everybody's been very, uh, um, it's, it's been received favorably. As a matter of fact, it was fun to go back to some of these people that had the posters from last year and they still had them up because they thought they were cool to have in, the, in their buildings anyway. And most everyone uh, um, was very receptive. So um, it's a fun activity. It's up for a month. And uh, I did have one suggestion when I put uh, the, the uh, uh, poster in the library that they have a uh, uh, holder inside the door that, they, that has pamphlets. And she wanted to know if maybe we couldn't uh, uh, print out some of those maps in sort of a pamphlet form because she thought people would like, like to have them as well. Oh, that's well. a good idea. Uh, the buildings that we added were the uh, Patton House, and the uh, Unitarian Church. Oh, great. So. Is it an um, audio tour? Or or no, it's, uh, it's just a self-guided walking tour, oh. and you follow the map. Follow and the map. Cool. Oh, and, and, and thank you for David for all his work, too. He helped with the map and, and setting up the, uh, the uh, link to the QR code. Oh, you're welcome. And, and that's on the city website? Yes. It's on the uh, if you go to the city's website and then under um, four residents in the top, there's an events page. Okay. And I think it's the first item on the events page. will give you a link to that map. If you, if you have your smartphone, though, you can just hold it up to one of the posters. Okay. And it will give you the, give you the map. Oh, and I did give, uh, uh, put the uh, Preservation Partners uh, web page and uh, a link to Pre Preservation Partners and a link to the History Museum if people wanted any further information. Any other item? Um, I did want to let the Commission know that uh, the Geneva Broadcast Network has a program called Geneva Works. I'm sure you all watch that from time to time. and. Uh, <laughs> I'm hoping you do. Um, and you'll want to tune in to uh, uh, watch the segment on historic preservation that will be airing soon, um, that is going to start airing sometime in Preservation Month and will continue um, on the Geneva Broadcast Network for some time. Who is starring um, in that? Unfortunately, <laughs> it is me. But uh, if you can endure to watch me for uh, 15 or 20 cool. minutes, um, you can. Uh, <laughs> there you go. Um, you, you can see what uh, I have to say, but that's again an, uh, uh, an educational outreach to uh, inform uh, the residents of Geneva about what we do as a commission and uh, and um, and uh, how how we process uh, applica applications for building permits, etc., um, through the, through the in the historic district. And tell us how we find that again. It's on the Geneva Broadcast Network. If you go to the city's webpage and look up GBN Broadcast, I think it's got a tab at the bottom of the main page, yeah. too. Um, you can search it in YouTube as well. We yes. have a YouTube and channel. YouTube? Okay. Mm -hmm. um, I would just like to say what a great idea and what a great job, and thank you for improving it and getting it to where it is. It's been a great team effort. Uh, thanks to Al and David, I haven't had to do it much with it other than put one poster up. So uh, uh, they've done a great job getting it together and appreciate their help this year. Um, and the last thing I want to note, uh, you all should be members of Landmarks Illinois. So I'm, I'm assuming you've all gotten a notice of the statewide preservation conference in Carbondale this year. Um, I know that's a long trek for a lot of people to go, but uh, again, I would encourage you if you have the time and the wherewithal to uh, attend um, the statewide preservation conference is always a good opportunity to um, um, mix and mingle with other preservations from around the state and find out what is going on and how they're handling problems that, and, and, and situations that we may be dealing with on the local level as well. And I do not have the date in my, in my head tonight. I forgot to bring that down with me. So um, if somebody knows that date, it is late June. I want to say the 23rd. Usually the third weekend yes, it's usually the third weekend in June, but I don't remember those dates. And that is all I have um, at this point under the Secretary's report. All right. Next item is new business. 
And the first is from the commission. Is there anything? You know, the thing, the, the sad thing about this new business is we're losing one of our members tonight. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. And uh, last meeting. And uh, she's going to be very much missed. And, and uh, I'm not sure. Michael said I had to say something, and I had it all figured out, and then I didn't write it down. <laughs> but uh, you've been an integral part of this uh, community and this organization for, I think, 11 years. So that is just amazing to me. And uh, we appreciate all the input you've had and all the education and experience you brought in to this organization. And, and it's going to leave a big hole here, and we hope we can fill it. But, uh, but uh, we're really going to miss you. Well, thank you. Thank you. I, I um, also will miss serving on the commission. It's bittersweet. You know, it's, it's been a part of my life now for quite a long time. And I have um, enjoyed watching the community change, but at the same time remain recognizable as Geneva. Can I just add that um, uh, I, I know you didn't have your notes, but I think it's, uh, since people may be watching this because we are recording this evening, that it's important to note all the things that uh, Nanette has really had her, her uh, finger in and has left an imprint on. Um, um, Nanette has helped develop the window policy and the siding policy that we use. Um, she was integral in serving on the uh, uh, group that helped pull the preservation plan together in 2010. Um, the design guidelines oh, and yeah. participate also in the downtown station area master plan effort. So Nanette has really made sure that uh, historic preservation has become an integral part of city documents and, and uh, made sure that we have good documents in order that we, we use all the time. So I know that others of you have participated and there were others who uh, were on those committees, but Nanette has really uh, done a service to our, to our commission and the work of historic preservation. Thank you. You're historic. <laughs> Actually, <laughs> this year, this year. <laughs> Is there any way we could landmark her? Or? <laughs> I'm not Do we need that. <laughs> Do we get owner consent on that? <laughs> All right. So, is there any, there's nothing else from the commission? Is there anything from the public? All right. Arm wrestle. Figure out who's first. Can I push this in? Yes. Thank you. Okay, Liz Safanda, 1013 Dunson Road. I'm so sorry that that Nanette is going to be leaving us. This is recorded tonight. Is that correct? Videotaped. I am so glad. This was an absolutely amazing meeting culmination of months of work many of us have been here every single session it was a very civil discussion pros and cons and all that I mean I just I can't tell you how much work you have accomplished uh, for the next step forward that you'll present it to the City Council I it's just wonderful um, I hope that the City Council members who aren't here tonight will take time to watch this video. I have a question and I have a concern. Um, Scott, I think it was you that said at the Council meeting they would be, uh, I don't want to say eager, um, uh, that they would like to hear the reasoning for a dissenting vote on this. Um, I am equally concerned that they hear the very thorough grounding of reasoning uh, for your votes in acceptance of this ordinance. And uh, I don't now really exactly know how that's going to happen. There were very eloquent voices raised tonight. Um, I am very extremely concerned about uh, what is going to happen at the council meeting next week and about the opposition to this ordinance, which is uh, full of, of, of misinformation and distortion. And I have read every word that has gone out, at least every word I could get a hold of. Uh, I'm very eager that the commissioners can be able to raise their voices and... Um, you know, there are a lot of bit, we've, we've heard a lot of loved voices, but I'm not sure they're all the voices of wisdom. So I truly hope there'll be an opportunity. I know, Scott, that you spoke very eloquently, and I want to compliment you after the fact, at the hearing before the City Council on the Sixth Street School issue. 
and and it was uh, deeply appreciated by all of us. But will there be an opportunity for? I mean, Nanette has has retired. Will there be an opportunity for these voices to be heard? Well, I'm intending to go, whether or not I'm, I'm given the opportunity to speak. It just depends David, on the tenor. David, you want to talk about that process? There, can, there can, will absolutely be an opportunity okay. for the commission okay. to, to speak at the council okay. meeting. There's, it's a public mm -hmm. meeting, so there's opportunity for public comment, staff comment, and of course the commission. Sure, because, you know, uh, if they don't see the video tonight, I know that um, Jim and uh, Mike Bruno here, you know, have heard this and and understand the ramifications of your reasoning. And it wasn't any kind of, you know, violent or, or uh, you know, it was a very civil undertaking. But I really feel so strongly about this. And I'm very concerned about the future of Geneva. I'm very concerned. But anyway, congratulations on the work you've done. It was just amazing. And I think there should be applause going that way, too. <laughs> yeah. I'm Gloria Ann Campbell. I live at 18 South 6th Street, and I would like to do ditto to a lot of things Liz has said. And yes, man, it's going to be very different without you here. I just want to, on piggyback or catching a trolley and riding along on historic preservation, just to let you know that um, the History Museum is going to have a trolley during Swedish days, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday which will be doing tours of the historic district, not down 3rd Street, obviously, um, more the perimeter of the historic district, but that will be running hourly, departing from the corner by the Unitarian Church at James and 2nd. So people will have an opportunity. It's enclosed, air-conditioned if it's a hot Swedish days, and also is handicapped accessible. Okay. So that's something that people can learn about more about our community. And then, of course, there are walking tours that they could pick up if they want to walk within the district. Mm -hmm. But that's another way of educating our own community as well as those who come into Swedish Days. Just All wanted right. you to know. Thank you. Thank oh, you. another question. Do we have any, any idea on 6th Street, I mean, time-wise, when we go down there and wrap our arms around it and not let it go down? <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't have that yet. I, I'm, I'm assuming IHP will let me know when the uh, contract is actually signed, and then I would think it would probably be a matter of days um, rather than months. So. And again, I hope, I mean, Chris Lawson said he would see that they preserve the cornerstone. You may want to re, uh, <laughs> remind him of that, remind yes. Him of that because yes. I, I, I know there's a lot of issues that they're looking at as far as getting all their ducks in a row to uh, uh, undertake this project, but uh, you, it never hurts to remind people of the important right. little things. And he told me he'd bring a shovel and help me dig for the time <laughs> capsule, so, you know. <laughs> <laughs> well, remind him of that. Um, Michael, how, how, long, how long are those, um, those posters up? They'll be up a, at least a month. So um, they're going to be up through for, Swedish days, so that some we, of them were up from last year. June. If you see one of these, <laughs> there'll be 18 of them around the around the town. So this is what you're looking for, only a little bit bigger. It's it's just a, a, month. a link on the city's web page, so we can extend the date to make sure it goes through Swedish but, so days. So they'll be up at Swedish days. We had it up through June 15th, I think. So we can extend it through the end of June, maybe to yeah, to end make of sure June because up. I think that That's that would be idea. great with the trolley tour to it, it, it all together. Yeah. How about you, Ernie? Uh, yes, I'm, I'm Ernie Mahaffey, 503 South 1st Street, and uh, I renovated 405 South 1st Street, uh, which is a, a significant property uh, which we renovated to very high energy standards, and very proud of that. Wish I could sell it. But, <laughs> um, uh, I, I really, I mean, I, I've, as something's come on me, come, come, uh, something's come to my attention tonight that I really, I really worry about. I think it, if we lose this um, third-party designation thing, which is, has only been used legitimately once, or only been used once, really, that then the next thing is going to be people who are, have designated properties having the right to rescind their designations. And the next thing will be people who live in historic districts having the right to not live in a historic district. And I, I mean, I think it's really, really troublesome if someone uh, if we if we remove that tool and uh, uh, it's it's a community thing it's a context thing I would hope down the road five years ten years that those people who who refuse to have their neighborhoods designated historically 
will wish that they were because it's the context, you know, as, as the teardowns come, the community deteriorates uh, fundamentally until maybe 50 years out when they're all McMansions or something, or something different. Um, what protects us is our designation, 503 South 1st Street, 405 South 1st Street. Um, what protects the people around me is, is my house mm -hmm. uh, and the fact that, th that they have to come and talk to you about, uh, even if they're not designated, they have to come and talk to you about what they would do with their property. And uh, uh, that's only fair because it's a neighborhood that counts. And uh, I, I just think in a different time, a different era, um, we, will, we will have people saying, I wish our neighborhood were historic, de historically designated. And we will selectively, this time hopefully, selectively designate some more neighborhoods. I hope that people do come and have their, their properties landmarked. They're not going to get much support for that from our community today, but maybe down the road they will. Um, uh, it's, you know, it's, it, it is Geneva. It is fundamentally what Geneva is. Even if you don't live in historic district, if you live in Mill Creek, you're proud of the historic district of Geneva. And part of that is that numbers of properties are designated. Numbers of neighborhoods are um, uh, uh, historic. And, and we care about what happens there. And, and we exercise control as a community. Uh, uh, I'm proud of the way this, uh, this, uh, the, the regulation is being updated. I think it's commendable uh, of this group that you would take that up at a time when you know there's a lot of opposition to it. Uh, that's the whole point. You know, let's get all of the controls we want in there that, that, that will continue to have it work. And um, uh, so I, I commend you all and wish you the best next week. Unfortunately, I can't be here. Um, but I'm proud to have a historic house. I'm proud to have bought another historic house. Um, I'm going to lose money on this second one for sure. But it still, it counts. You know, I know it's going to be here for another 100 years. Uh, it's built a lot better than it was when it, in 1929. Um, and uh, uh, whoever's, whoever buys that house is going to get a hell of a value. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. Colin Campbell, 18 South 6th Street, um, echoing what Ernie said, that we are a community. And in our society, we have become so almost fanatically concerned with individual rights. I want my rights. I want my rights. And it's a relatively recent thing in history. Having been a history teacher, I'm kind of aware of that. Community has rights, too. And that's what government is for, to balance between the individual and community. But they have to have the tools to do it. Um, that's, by the way, because you've already decided this. I just want to thank you all personally again for the tremendous amount of work that you have put in on this, the very careful consideration that you've given to it, word by word by word, but especially to Michael, who has done so much, and Dave, but Michael, who has done so much work uh, under very difficult circumstances, particularly this last couple of weeks. And he deserves more consideration than this city could ever give him. Thank you. Thank you. Any others? All right, next item is motion to adjourn. Can I do it? <laughs> motion to adjourn. I move that we adjourn. Second. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 All right, any opposed? <laughs>